Welcome to a May 26, 2021 special meeting of the Cupertino City Council. Madam City Clerk, would you please conduct a roll call of the City Council? Council Member Moore? Here. Council Member Way? Here. Council Member Willie? Here. Vice Mayor Chow? Here. Mayor Paul? Here. At the beginning of this meeting, I would like to hold a 30 second moment of silence for the victims of today's mass shooting in San Jose. Thank you very much. The topic of our special meeting tonight is the 2021-2022 City Work Program. Our fiscal year begins on July 1st, 2022, and it will end on June 30th, 2000. Oh, I'm sorry, 2021, and it will end on June 30th, 2022. And so uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to uh, engage in an ongoing discussion with regard to what the council's priorities are for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, I will like to say briefly that I'm very appreciative of all the efforts that have gone in by our city staff, our city council, the public um, in trying to formulate what is a good cohesive work plan, work plan going forward. And um, I did add a few things uh, due to some uh, experiences and observations of what might be um, good allocations, but I think everyone is in good faith working here for trying to create a community work plan. So um, I just wanted to make that statement at the outset of this. And so with regard to being able to, uh, you know, have certain priorities or allocations, uh, I think we've set a good tone for trying to go forward in the next year coming off of a rather unusual year here. So without further ado, um, Madam City Clerk, would you like to introduce the um, staff presentation on the side. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam City Manager, would you like to, uh, I apologize. That's okay. I'm gonna ask, uh, so Katie is sharing her screen and I'm gonna just run through a very sh uh, short deck of slides in order to uh, provide most discussion time for the City Council. As a reminder, this is our, I wonder if you could make your, the screen a little bit bigger, Katie. So this is where we are in the process. Um, City Council meeting in May um, for consideration of the work program, 2021-22 work program. Next. Um, I'm not gonna read the slides of course, but um, you understand what process we've been through. Uh, the departments have considered items in priority order and proposed items for 2022 city work program based upon priority. On May 5th, the council provided additional direction to revise the proposed 2021, sorry, 21-22 city work program. Um, this is a um, kind of summary. What we're gonna go through is kind of the revisions from the last time you saw this. We heard you, we, we organized the commission and committee items more in an omnibus package. Uh, we added language revamping the block leader program and neighborhood watch items, uh, along with um, neighborhood councils, consideration of neighborhood councils and term limits for block leaders. We added language encouraging dark sky compliance by school sites and removed the traffic garden item. We um, took a look at the revision put forth by the mayor um, back on that date. Um, and find that we have for the drone show, we can do some more research should the council um, decide on this item uh, for July 4th, 2022, due to some of the items that uh, the mayor mentioned last time, including a competition for this um, drone show um, and other research we would have to do regarding FAA certification. Um, our current, just some data, our current estimated fireworks show cost roughly uh, $80,000 total, 82500 
I'm sorry, $82,500 total, including um, planning the logistics for approximately a 25 minute show. Uh, the estimated drone show is a $200,000 show for an plus 50,000 for logistics. So $250,000 for approximately 11 minute show. And there are multiple, um, multiple uh, uh, entities now providing the, these kinds of drone shows. Um, again, I mentioned the FAA permitting and some more research to figure out where these drone shows could be held or located. Um, to accommodate this particular piece of the new proposal, um, we would have to hold off the uh, dogs off leash till FY23. Um, as a reminder, uh, we have started a DOLA pilot, but we haven't um, completed the pilot along with some of the other sports that are at uh, Jollyman, nor have we expanded that DOLA to other parks. And DOLA was rated as one of the lower, uh, one of the low rated items by council. Next. Uh, for the council commission engagement, um, there was a proposed $300,000, uh, $50,000 for council, $25,000 per commission. Um, there has been a recommendation, actually, as I've heard at the mayors and commissions meeting to have commissions submit ideas to the council for evaluation to allow for an estimation of staff time required, um, approval by council and a disclosure about how the funds will be spent on a in kind of a proposal process. Um, this can easily, this can be accommodated, but not knowing what the uh, process will actually be at this point. Um, as restrictions lift, however, many of the commissions in that meeting, commission leads, um, talked about relaunching normal activities such as our festivals and sports and programming at some of our um, city, um, city facilities as we reopen, which will also help us um, reactivate and get back to normalcy, which I think is the intent of this proposal. Um, additional, um, for these items, because we are staffed for that, those items will not take additional uh, staffing or uh, are as normal, part of normal operations. Uh, Cupertino store added to the Chamber of Commerce. There was $100,000 proposed to renovate the Chamber of Commerce building to provide a space for the Cupertino store. Um, normally, uh, I wouldn't recommend that we take dollars and invest in somebody else's property. Um, perhaps there's a lease agreement or something that can be had in reverse with the chamber in order to support the idea of the Cupertino store. Um, the chamber, this assumes the chamber would also manage the renovation and store operations, including staffing. If city staff are needed to manage the renovation of the store, additional staff would have to be required there are shifts that need to be considered um, as part of the store, depending on how um, busy it might be. Uh, and if the city is expected to provide merchandise, it is estimated to start up that merchandise at about $25,000. $10,455 $10, As a, I don't think I have to remind anybody that we recently acquired that for the city. There's about a $3 million um, proposed um, a budget, sorry, to renovate it and make it ADA compliant as and is also part um, of the CIP proposal. Uh, since this item has already been planned for as part of the CIP, um, much of the staff time has already been accounted for in that item. Uh, the recommended action, of course, after discussion is to provide in a little more input and um, adopt the 2020, sorry, 2021-22 city work program. And that is it. Okay, great. Thank you, City Manager Fung. We are now at, um, oh, and, and could you pull the um, last slide up just so we can uh, reiterate where we are in the process and what to expect in the upcoming two steps? Because of course, the work plan synergizes with our budget and the budget needs to be defined very uh, briefly. Absolutely. Uh, in time. So, um, so we're looking at our city blow it up. Meeting. Yeah, blow it up a little bit. Sorry about that. It's a little small for no, so there you go. And we have an upcoming uh, budget session, uh, and that's a continued session from our last uh, session. And, and I believe that 
Um, irrespective of when it occurs next week, it will probably happen in early June. Um, so um, that next box is uh, going to be modified because of course, you know, uh, we, we don't have on our calendar teed up for it to happen within the next uh, five days. And then in the city council meeting in June, we have to adopt the proposed uh, budget for the next fiscal year. Um, and so uh, this is really well-timed. Again, congratulations on getting us into this synergized uh, moment where we're um, taking all of our commissions uh, and the audit committee and uh, considering the feedback and input. And, and here we are, there's a cohesive document and we're in a position to combine it with uh, our, our budgetary efforts that are timely and for the next coming uh, fiscal year. So thanks very much. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for any uh, questions from our city council with respect to the staff presentation. Council member Moore. Uh, so I have a question kind of on the, on the budget uh, and just, it's a real basic one. So if, if we had appropriated funds to say cultural events um, in the previous budget and those monies weren't spent, uh, could you remind me what happens to uh, that? So say you appropriated maybe 400,000 for cultural events maybe spent 100,000, what happens to the other 300,000? Um, Council Member Moore, I can answer that question. Christine Alfaro, Director of Administrative Services. I'm gonna apologize for the background noise, um, but hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, what happens with those dollars is that department will evaluate if they need to carry over any of those dollars into the next fiscal year for the same purposes for which it was granted. If they do have that request, they'll make that request to budget staff who will review that request and either carry over those funds for the same purpose or let those funds fall to fund balance. Okay, now I wish I understood that. <laughs> so let's try it again. So there's, okay. there's 300,000 left over. And in this budget, the new one, we have 402,000 allocated to cultural events. Is it 402,000 plus potentially whatever's left over, or is that like a decision somebody has to make? It's a potentially, but it's a decision that gets made. So first the department will request those dollars be carried over if they want them to, and they have to tell us what they're gonna use them for because it has to be for the same purpose for which the council allocated those funds. And then we go ahead and we would approve those if, if that's the case and the department can show why they need those dollars. And then we bring all of those carryover appropriations um, as an attachment to council as part of the first quarter. Okay, okay. I get that, yes. Um, and then, um, so when I look at the cultural events that are in the budget um, going forward, uh, they talk about, um, gosh, uh, 4th of July festivities, um, let's see, Big Bunny 5K, uh, let's see, events at Memorial Park, Quinlan Community Center, summer concert series, cinema at sundown, Shakespeare in the Park, and tree lighting. Um, and cultural events at Memorial Park, including the Cherry Blossom Festival, festival World Journal Festival, um, et cetera. Um, so I would think that a lot of those events are probably not going to take place, or like with Big Bunny, it became kind of, uh, it was more virtual. You didn't have to have the staffing and all that out um, in the public. So uh, I'm just kind of wondering for some of these uh, requests that have popped in at the end of the last meeting, is there some way that um, that this, can can this be, you know, manipulated a little bit to, in order to, to cover other 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 events or can can the money be used for the the council objective um the adding money funds to the commissions or committees or is it kind of locked in here um so we wouldn't uh we wouldn't be able to really answer that till first quarter when we've closed our books and we know what's um kind of fallen into fund balance and we can bring that number back to council to say we thought we were going to end with, let's say 10 million at year end in fund balance, but we actually ended with 12 million. So there's an additional 2 million that we didn't expect to come in that would go to our, our unassigned or unearmarked fund balance. But we don't generally make that calculation till we close our books or at least um, 
which happens generally at the end of September timeframe, and then we bring first quarter uh, mid-November back to the council. Okay, great. Thanks very much. I don't see a um, hand raised from council member Moore anymore. We'll go on to council member Way. Thank you, Mayor Paul. Um, is this where I can ask clarification, oh, sorry, clarification questions of the, um, the projects? Yes, please. Okay. So on number two, um, in addition to the Mary project, we combined the Outback Stake house location. So I wonder if the scope maybe should not just include ELI housing for developmental disabled, but also include EMR housing, because it looks like it's just a broader two projects together instead of just one. Uh, yes, so Mr. Mayor, if I may respond. Yes, please, Director Fu. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilmember Wei. Uh, yeah, the council can certainly make that clarification, but ELI is, is part of BMR, affordable, affordable housing. So I think specifying the ELI, ELI housing doesn't preclude other affordability levels for study or for consideration. So, but again, council can certainly make that clarification if, if you feel like that makes it more clear, um, more transparent, um, that, that, that's fine. Okay, I would like to, to add that. So it's more uh, broader, the scope is broader. Um, so another question uh, is number six, it says to develop a job program, I guess for the homeless, for two individuals for six months, and that's gonna cost $200,000. Are we develop this by ourselves or we're doing with the county? How does this monetary come about? It seems very not cost effective to develop a, two jobs for six months for $200,000. Uh, yes, Councilman Wei, uh, Ben Fu, Director of Community Development. Uh, yeah, it's it's a new item for for us uh, citywide. So it's it's sort of our ballpark estimate. If we need to, for example, seek a contract assistant, for example, if we need to get in-house uh, recruitment, whether it's social service type of experience or not, we just we just don't know. I mean, working with the homeless task force. Uh, that's that's comprised from from community development, public works um, departments. We we just don't know. So it's it's a it's a very very new item. We don't have any experience doing this. So two hundred thousand is sort of our, I guess ballpark. We'll have to come back once once it gets approved. We initiate the project. We'll have much better idea um, about how to proceed. But yes, we will, of course we'll have to explore collaborative opportunities with 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 the county. I think that's that's um, that's a given. Um, the county has more of the resources uh, and the experience in this area, but we also want to to look at uh, any potential citywide internal options as well. Okay, so the scope could be more than two individuals, six months. Just an example that you're giving. I think that the the scope for two individuals is what I what we heard from from council. Uh, I think um, council member Willie had proposed that, so that's what we put down for two, but. Um, and that's that's what's there what's there right now. Okay, because it's a new project, so it's just I got maybe a scope and then a budget put in there. You come back to us after first quarter or ask um, when it's being implemented that we can adjust it. Uh, is that a correct description of yeah. it? Let me, let me manager. Try, now let me try some of this. Um, so it's just been kind of our experience nominally from the homeless encampment, um, addressing the homeless encampment uh, earlier in the, or late last year, is that um, a lot of times if you're working with the homeless, seemingly they, they may not have any issues, but a good majority of them have mental health issues and they require wraparound services or support during work programs. So we estimated what appears to be high, but our experience now with um, the wraparound services that are supporting the individuals in housing as we speak, are it's very expensive. So again, it's kind of a combination between my answer for the content of what might need to, might that, that funding might need to support um, combined with um, Director Fu's answer. Okay, thank you. So number six and seven, kind of a combination of homelessness um, project. Okay, so I'm gonna add it to um, Council Member Moore's question on budget. For example, on 11, the shuttle bus budget has already been $1,750,000. I think that's a um, two years ago budget. And so 
this we're not asking for new money, right? Because the project is kind of stopped right now because of COVID. When it reinstated, this is still within that rough budget. Um, I can handle that, Mayor, if you'd, if you'd like me to. Roger Lee, Director of Public Works, um, Councilmember Way. Yes, that that was those were funds that were budgeted in the 1920 fiscal year. Um, we did spend some of those dollars as we did ramp up the program. It was program was suspended. Those dollars are still there and then carried over and will be applied when the shuttle uh, gets back into business. We we do anticipate bringing that back to council for some consideration to that agreement um, in the next month or so, very soon. All right, thank you. So that's a, not a new budget, okay. Um, I have a question on 29. The lease with San Jose Water, it ends in November, 2022. So this project seems to have a time constraint that you need to kind of work it out before this ends. So uh, we seem to prioritize it pretty low. So how would we handle that? Will we put it, you know, start to do it a little bit earlier, even because even it's rated low? Because uh, there is a time constraint. We need to do it before the uh, contract ends, which is November 2022. Right. Um, well, you know, how council wishes to prioritize or what projects they want to include in the work plan is, is at your discretion. As a, as a department, we're, uh, Public Works, we're, we're responsible for that lease agreement and we're, we're moving forward timely, you know, given that time constraint. And we do have a, a discussion scheduled on this topic um, you very soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Way. Councilmember Willie. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to provide a little bit of my thinking since, you know, I was the one who was um, wanting to get a uh, jobs program. And so to me, it's it's an open, open um, item at this point. My thinking was <clears throat> that we have the homeless that conceivably want to get back into the workplace, but with all the hindrances, they find that very difficult. Until you can get that first job, how do you then get a job at another company that's more long-term? So that being said, I talked to Josh Sello at West Valley Community Services and ran the idea by, uh, by him saying, if we could put two people that are conceivably homeless or close to it in our community, part-time work, maybe public works, helping a, a work crew or landscaping. Maybe it would be uh, parks and rec and maybe helping out um, set up chairs or displays, or maybe it would be administrative services. Josh said, yes, he would be very happy to work with the city and he says that he has uh, quite a few homeless and near homeless people that really would like to be employed, but getting started is a challenge for which West Valley Community Services doesn't have the means to do that. So he said by helping channel a couple people to us that would work for part time for about six months, conceivably getting Cupertino City on their resume that then would allow them the next step and providing things worked out like that, those two seats would open up for maybe two more. At the end of six months, at the end of a year, we look back, how were we able to help some of the uh, uh, challenged individuals that are in our community? That's what's behind this. Um, I'm happy that, you know, there's, a conceivably not to exceed $200,000 amount, but I, I don't see it as being that size at all if we're hopefully uh, trying to get individuals that are in that capacity of, of needing a job and uh, they're stable and they're currently uh, connected with West Valley Community Services, that takes a lot of the unknown out and you know allows us to help in that capacity so that's what my thinking is and i think after we approve the work plan providing that stays in here you know we would have a team meeting with city staff public work arts and rec 
administrative services and see, and then with whatever we then feel, we would then invite Josh from West Valley Community Services to come over and kind of help us, you know, decide how to implement this with his help. And so I'm, I'm very positive on it. I really hope six months, 12 months down the road, we look back and say, wow, we were an active participant in helping the, the uh, challenged individuals in our community. So, so I'll leave it at that. I hope that gives what I'm thinking, but what really plays out will be, you know, more or less the, uh, the task to define. Thanks. Okay, great. Thanks, Councilmember Willie. Uh, Councilmember Moore, I do see a little bit um, up again, but what I'll do is I'll go through a round of questions uh, from each of the council members and then go over to public comment uh, for members of the public that are here. And then we can have another round of questions, including discussion uh, following uh, our public commentary. So uh, Vice Mayor Chow, did you have any clarifying questions of the staff presentation? Okay, number 12, the Lawrence Mickey project. And I see that uh, we don't have any additional budget and then we are doing the annexation next year. So do we expect that to take uh, the entire year? and we are not planning to start designing or concept brainstorming the whole year. I'm just wondering. No, thank you for the question. Uh, we are, um, as we mentioned in, our, in one of our prior meetings, um, annexation will occur uh, and we have the budget to uh, proceed with uh, planning, uh, community outreach, programming of, of the uh, location and if everything lines up well and then annexation goes quickly, we, we very easily could be getting into design yet next fiscal year. So you mean, so the next fiscal year, um, we will be doing outreach to the community to discuss what, how do we use this site? Yes, yes, that, that's correct. That's not very clear from the description or the objective. And then so those activity, the outreach wouldn't doesn't need any additional budget because it's all budgeted staff time, right? Okay. That, that's correct. Um, but then the, this, this objective doesn't really say we will start the outreach uh, concept. So likely you envision we might come to an idea what to do then in the next fiscal cycle, we would have uh, design. Uh, correct. Um, yeah, I think what um, I think what we've previously stated is that we would, uh, after we had acquired the property, um, that we would complete the annexation property process. We would develop the development project for the site would be included in the CIP. So it's it's part of our CIP um, description. I think that's where the detail you're looking for is at okay. is in our CIP. Okay. So when do we expect the annexation to finish? Well, there's, there's, you know, we, we've submitted things to LAFCO and to the city of San Jose. So it is going through that process. Um, you know, we're prodding it along, but we don't control the, the length of it, but we're, we've done what we, what we can do and we're, we are monitoring it frequently. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. jump in yeah. by way of um, uh, extension of that answer, Vice Mayor Chow. So there was an, uh, a submission and um, we needed to have San Jose place it on an agenda sometime in April. Uh, they didn't. Um, I, I was actually not aware that the city had made that submission. And so I recently followed up with our city manager who uh, notified me that that had happened. Um, and I, I just did make a point without casting aspersions that it would have been good to have that knowledge back in January when it was submitted so that, you know, people in Cupertino do also know our fellow uh, electeds in, in San Jose, and we could, you know, start talking. And, and so right now, we're at a point in the annexation process where the next touch point in San Jose would be in October. 
And so I think we're advised uh, at this point for six months in advance. Uh, and so it would be good uh, to be able to, um, you, you know, have those communications uh, and, and be able to encourage that. And, and if not, if not necessarily in a way that, um, in a way that is, is direct, at least be aware of it so that those stated priorities uh, can be made known uh, to uh, So I, I think it's been clear in the context of our meetings that are uh, kind of in a relative fishbowl, right? Because we have a lot of various jurisdictions around the area um, that we have this as a priority on council and public, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily even known across Bollinger, right? In, in San Jose or across uh, Lawrence Expressway for that matter. So, so that's just something to keep in mind. And hopefully we do get um, a significant touch point in the annexation process moving forward. Um, and, you know, frankly, I agree with you that we can be working in parallel on, on outreach as well. So uh, definitely appreciate the question. Um, Mr. Mayor, may I add just a little couple yes, of pieces of information there? Fun. So right after that October timeframe in the city of San Jose, LAFCO has another thing happening in December. So that tight turn council and, and staff will have to pay particular attention to when it comes out of October. The October process in San Jose to make sure that um, LAFCO and everybody is aware going into their December process. And then it should be relatively quick coming out the other end by, I think it's that spring or so. Um, the other thing is that we are preparing uh, an RFP for that quote programming and outreach piece for, for consultants. So it is happening concurrently, but we can't quite do it until the, but you know, we've got the budget in line and all that. So it will happen concurrently, it won't happen linear. Okay, so best case, um, San Jose approved it in October, left call in December, and the annexation will happen early spring. That's what I think. We will start the outreach. Then, but then it's, that cost is not in the budget. So there will be a cost because we are going to retail consultant to do the outreach. So that's yeah, the only due to right now. Right. Thank you. Okay. And we might need to adjust or if everything goes well, I guess. Okay, that's fine. So number 14, um, that's the objective standard. So I see it was allocated a million dollars and now it's 500,000. So we don't have as, many, as much to do as we had expected. Uh, no, Vice Mayor Chow, uh, we have just as much <laughs> as we anticipated. Uh, this is merely a sort of a budgetary um, efforts. Uh, so we, we estimate a million dollars for the last fiscal year for the item. And obviously the item has rolled over to this fiscal year as well. Uh, we've only used 500,000. Uh, so therefore we kind of just rolled the 500,000 remaining for this year. Does that make sense? I'm not, I don't know if I'm explaining that pro uh, properly, but um, it's, it's, it's still the same uh, amount. And what we're estimating the, <clears throat> the cost uh, is related to legal as well as, well as environmental review. Uh, and that's what the budget is primarily for. Oh, so 500,000 is used. So it's, that's the remaining 500,000. That's correct. Some that's why you, the... so you have a funky I... language that talks about defund and, uh, and I think that's a, that's a budget uh, thing. Yeah. But some of the item I see the exact amount um, for allocated budget and then the same amount for estimates. Because, um, for example, like the shuttle bus, it's the same amount. So, so to clarify, so we already spent some on that already. <laughs> yeah, so to clarify, it's uh, the estimated budget is what we had originally estimated. And since this was an existing item, um, we didn't want to not show that we had originally estimated a uh, million. And so, but now we're saying that we think it, it's only gonna be an estimate of 500,000 and the actual allocation was a million, but the remaining unused 500,000 will return to the general fund. Okay. So allocated is allocated this fiscal year. And the allocated means the that it was funded by council at some yeah, point. It could be this fiscal year or prior. Or prior to fiscal year. And the estimated is for the the, the new fiscal year. This is how much it will appear on the budget. Okay. Um, not necessarily. The estimated yeah. is just what we estimate the project to cost given the scope that we have today. 
Um, so since the estimated budget is less than what we've been allocated, the remaining budget will be returned to the general. So, but then it's still the, the next fiscal year on the book, we would allocate 500,000 for this project, right? Yes, the council will have funded 500,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, number 19, it's the climate action plan. I think allocated was 100,000 and now estimated is 178,000. So this was the continued item. So was the 100,000 already spent? So are we looking at the total cost 278,000 or is the total cost 178? Um, we have a hundred of order. How, how do we know how much of the allocated from prior years are expensed? So I know the total cost of the project. Good question. Good evening, Vice Mayor. This is um, Andre Durbort, the sustainability manager. I can answer your first question uh, regarding the climate action plan and the total cost for that project. Uh, this is an item that was uh, authorized in the work program for our current fiscal year and budgeted $100,000, uh, the, that uh, the total project cost at that time was known that it would be greater, but we uh, we actually held off on requesting the full amount with the uncertainties of COVID. What we have here is a, is a request for the remaining amount to finish that project. So the total price for that will be $178,000 to complete the climate action plan. Okay, so total is 178. The 100,000 allocated uh, this year is not used yet? Or? Uh, we, we've utilized the uh, $100,000 that was originally allocated and uh, we are requesting uh, in our next fiscal year uh, $78,000 to bring that project to completion. So, the, the, so, so it should appear in the new year budget as 78,000, right? Not Correct, 178. This is where it gets confusing. So 178 is 100,000 from this year already allocated and expensed. And then we are requesting 78,000 um, for the next fiscal year for um, additional work to finish this, right? Okay. That is correct. So then, it, yeah, this two column is a little confusing here. And then, so the for the mixed use, residential design standard. I also see 200,000 for this year, 240 for next year. Is it a similar interpretation? 200,000 is allocated and expensed. And now next year we are only adding 40,000 to the new budget. Sorry, yes, we have, uh, yes, correct. So, so yes, so the so what we will see for next fiscal year is this two forty minus two hundred thousand. Okay, that's how. So this is almost done then, right? Okay, thank you. That's all for now. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. Yeah. I have a limited number of questions before I go to public comment. Um, with regard to uh, the staff presentation of the uh, amount of cost for a fireworks show, it stated 34,500, if I'm remembering correctly, it was 30,000 something, um, in addition to $50,000 of additional costs. So that's roughly 80 something thousand dollars, correct? That's correct. I think it was 32,500 plus 50,000. Okay, great. So 82,500 and did we have a fireworks show last year? In 2020, we did not. Okay. And how about in approximately a month and a week or so? Are we anticipating a fireworks show then? No, we will not. Okay. And are we expecting that the cost is fairly similar from last year to this year to prospectively next year if we were looking at fireworks shows? Uh, probably. I would say that's a saving. I mean, we're that's not going to experience a significant savings uh, on the order of, you know, a third or more or anything like that. It, it should be. 
I think it's a safe similar. bet. I think it's a safe bet that the estimates will be somewhat similar. Yes. Somewhat similar and possibly even a little bit higher, just depending upon how. Yep. You know the costs go. So eighty-two thousand five hundred, um, I believe, is what two thousand two hundred forty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. Is that reasonable? It's it's approximately two hundred fifty thousand. Which the drone show. No, if you multiply three times oh, 8,500 okay. for three years of fireworks shows. Uh, I haven't done the math, but. Yeah. So, well, you just take 80,000 80, times three is pretty straight. 247,500. 500, okay. So with respect to identifying a cost, um, it, it is, would you agree fairly comparable to what our uh, initially anticipated costs might be? And, and uh, just to clarify, the estimate I made, I went on to Intel's website, but of course um, there are um, multiple vendors who provide these types of services. But for Intel, their kind of top of the line, if you will, listed price is 200,000. Of course, they'll, they'll do more, uh, but you know, they'll ask for an inquiry directly. Um, so, but based upon that estimate, the three years um, that we would not have had any kind of a fireworks show this year, last year, uh, and next year, um, you know, assuming that there isn't one there either, is pretty much equivalent, isn't it, to what our projected cost might be for a drone show uh, for next year, for July of 2022. Is that, is that a fair statement, do you think? Sure, if all those estimates remain remain the same. Um, you're right, there's multiple vendors that um, now provide these kind of things. And of course, uh, there's additional, uh, sorry, additional research to be done um, that we just didn't have, couldn't get to that we could spend, you know, the fiscal year researching uh, right. should council decide to, um, uh, should council vote this, this particular option in. Um, costs seem comparable. Um, just the comparative is, and, and they're different. They're completely different shows. So you have one at a, that lasts about 25 minutes and one that lasts about 11 minutes right. currently. Of course. Of Te course. Technology yeah. changes very quickly too, though, right? So yeah. Yeah, next yeah, year. To your point, um, the budgets can be, uh, can be expanded. They can also be shrunk, right? I mean, we yes. could uh, in all likelihood have uh, a show for approximately the same budget that we have a fireworks show as well. Uh, but of course, it wouldn't be as extensive um, as, as one with a, with a larger budget. So um, with regard to trying to figure out the uh, questions on Lawrence Mitty, um, you know, I, I do appreciate the fact that we're in the middle of an annexation process, but just to clarify, is there anything that prevents us from conducting public outreach uh, to the extent that we're essentially asking the question of what would the public like to see uh, in the utility of this space that we've uh, recently acquired in the last year. So I, I guess that's directed to um, either the director of public works who's turned his camera on or uh, the director of parks and rec, you know, recreation and community services or or the city manager. Um, let me go by order of turning the camera on. So Director Director Lee, anything precluding us from reaching out to the public at this point? I'm not aware of anything that would preclude us. As long as council, um, you know, we're proceeding without having the annexation in place, there is some minor margin of risk there. I don't think it's that great, but as long as that's understood. Um, okay. Proceed. Uh, Director Magrini, uh, any, uh, anything to add to that? No, I concur with Director Lee. Okay, great. And um, Susan, um, you have your camera. Did you, did you want to say anything to that point as well? Oh, no. <laughs> Technical issue. Sorry. Um, oh, we, sorry. There we are. Here. Put the microphone down. Uh, good evening, Mayor Pye. This is Susan Michael, CIP Direct, uh, Manager. And we are moving forward with the project. We are working on the RFP. Our next step is to um, go out for consultants to hire to get the process going. But we're definitely actively working on it. 
Great. What's the timetable for the RFP process look like? Uh, at, at around what time could the public expect to see, um, based upon the uh, RFP you're describing, uh, some kind of outreach to, uh, to them to you know, have those initial questions as to what they'd like to uh, experience and see at that space? I would expect that the RFP process would take a few months to uh, put it out there, get the right candidates and come back and then get them started on the designs and the strategy for the project. So I would guess that it would be somewhat, uh, let's say realistic at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. And is there a budget for the uh, contract that's been set aside at this point? I no, I don't think we have a budget at this point. Okay, and so what is the RFP asking for if we're not sure how much the services would cost? We're definitely working on that. We have a landscape architect we're trying to get involved as well as uh, consultants who are experienced in public outreach, um, playground uh, services, all of the above. It's is actually, it that's the difficulty is that we're trying to get a really good team that can do all the things that need to happen at that property, as I well see. as planning, as well as engineering all the things. So we're trying to write the RFP appropriately. Uh, understood. Okay, so that, that helped clarify one aspect of it. The RFP is not actually out at this point. No. Um, it is being formulated. And your expectation is that uh, a few months seems a, a pretty you know, kind of a broad range of uh, dates. So about how long would it take, do you think, before we could have that step where it's being Put out to the public and people could be actually examining the RFP itself. I think with the internal review we probably need to have a month to get that ready and then a month of having it out there to get responses and then another month to evaluate it which is a broad stroke. Okay oh thank you very much and then this is a budgetary question with respect to this project. So um, one of the first allocations that I made and this is way back when I was elected to council at the end of 2014 in that first budgetary cycle, that's when we were able to um, take these funds and set them aside for the Lawrence Mitty project. And while I'm, I'm very pleased that we were able to finally acquire this uh, property after decades of attempting to do so, I'm wondering um, what part of the allocation of the budget at this point needs to be specifically identified because if we have an RFP um, that's being uh, described here, but we're not sure what the budget is, um, is it necessary for us as council at this point to say, this is how much we would like to set aside uh, for this particular aspect of the project? Or is the expectation that at the time when the RFP is about to go out, there will be um, a visitation to council by staff to try to uh, request the funding. I, I think if we were looking at it prospectively from a responsible uh, budget-based perspective, then perhaps it would be a good idea to try to identify, um, I, I guess, the maximum contours of what a budget for this would look like um, at yeah. this point. Yeah, we would absolutely be coming back to council for authorization. We um, would pull together the RFP and part of that process is that we're going to be going out and hoping to get a well, a full-bodied team. And based on the responses that we get and the proposals that we get, then we can come back to council to seek your approval of the uh, responses that we did get and the direction that we're going to go from that point. I see. Okay, so the actual request for a budgetary allocation from what I'm hearing you say, Susan, will not happen until we hear back from the RFP proposals, have had a chance to evaluate them, and presumably the, the, the respondents, I won't say the bidders because there's no price tag associated right. with this, the respondents would be describing a range of, of budget that they would require to undertake those services. Is that, I, 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 forgive me, but from my perspective of what I understand of RFPs, that seems a little bit, um, uh, unusual because I usually see an RFP with a particular budget tied to it and a request for a description of the work. So it, perhaps this is a different species of RFP that I could be, become a bit more educated regarding. I'll, I'll interject if you don't mind. The 
what, what we're preparing now is an RFQ, request for qualifications, where we want to we want to see who's out there, who's the best qualified to deliver a scope of work that is that will will be defined. Um, we've not developed that scope of work. We're just going through the qualification process for for um, uh, consultants to, to deliver the work. Um, so that that's what we're describing now. That we'll, once we define the scope, we'll we'll get a price from them, and then that's when we will be coming back to council to to share that. Now, regarding the budget, I mean there there are funds already. Um, earmarked for this very purpose for Lawrence Mitty. I mean, if you recall, it's over $8 million was earmarked and the acquisition was much less than that. So when we come, the budget is, is there. We'll just be asking for the authorization to expend from that fund. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you for answering these questions. I'm very much looking forward. And I think our, our council as a whole is also very much looking forward to um, that visit to um, the council in two to three months with regard to more details as to uh, the outreach to the um, to the vendor community, to the community of entities that could be contracting uh, to help us reach out to our community and design this. Um, I, what I hope will be a jewel of a space. You know, frankly, I hope it becomes like the eastern part of our city's uh, Stevens Creek corridor, which was, um, you know, definitively a jewel and remains as such. And, has been stewarded uh, so very well. So thanks very much. Um, those are my questions initially. Um, and I would like to, at this point, go to our attendees from the public before we bring it back to council for another round of questions as well as commentary. Um, so uh, to clarify uh, and reiterate, um, please, uh, members of the public, have your hand raised if you would like to speak to this item. Um, and if your hand is raised by the end of our first public commenter, then I will call on you. And if it is not, unfortunately, um, I, I will not call on you. And so you'll have uh, until the end of when Jean Bedord gives her comments. And I also have Suda Kazimsetti after Jean with her hand raised. Welcome, Jean. You'll have three minutes. Okay, Kirsten, could you make that full screen, please? Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Paul and council members. My name is Jean Bedord and I'm a resident of Cupertino. I'm here to express my concerns with regards to the work program that you are considering tonight. I feel it's unrealistic to begin with and even more so with the resignation today of our city manager, Deb Feng, who so capably managed city operations during the COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide. The first issue is mismanagement by this council. Council is responsible for hiring two people, the city manager and the city attorney. Now there are vacancies at both positions, which is not good for our city. The council's track record retaining senior staff is, frankly, abysmal. The work program for this upcoming year leaves both the mandatory housing element and Valco under-resourced in favor of individual council projects. Suddenly, new projects appear on the plan that have not been rated by other council members or subjected to public scrutiny before tonight. What happened to the promise of transparency? Next slide. Let's look at those last minute projects. They involve a lot of money from the general fund. I have to question $250,000 for a gee whiz drone show for the 4th of July, instead of our traditional fireworks. I have to question $300,000 for council commission engagement during 2021. The city spent less than that to aid small businesses in 2020. They also spent less money than that for rental assistance. Both of these were benefits to our residents. But $300,000 on undefined projects makes no sense to me. Then there's the $100,000 for the Chamber of Commerce building. What is the justification for renovating a building not owned by the city? This is quite questionable. My ask of this council is to reduce the work plan to more realistic levels and make sure each project has a benefit to residents, not make work for staff and commissions. 
the city is short staffed as it is, and the situation will be worse with the loss of leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Our next speaker is Suda Kazansetti. Welcome, Suda. Hi, can you hear me? We can, yes. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, dear council members. My name is Sudha Kasam Sedi, Cupertino resident and Fine Arts Commissioner Chair. I'm representing myself today. And as all of us are aware, today is a special meeting to approve fiscal year 2021-2022 city work program. And one of the many items that Fine Arts Commission proposed as part of the work program is a proposal to increase the scope of the commission. Looking forward to seeing that approved today. Coming back to other parts of the city work program, last mayor's meeting with commissions, there was a proposal from our mayor to come up with creative ideas to re-engage the community for safe return to normalcy. It was interesting to hear so many ideas from different commissions during the meeting. As a fine arts commissioner, I proposed the idea of having posters with safety messages in creative way. In elementary school classrooms, uh, it engages our kids and sends right messages as well. In fact, we can extend this just not to schools, but also public places too. Arts has a very special place in the community, and I feel that this is an interesting way to rejuvenate and engage our community with right messaging as we return back to normalcy in the post-COVID world. I also noticed that there are other interesting ideas like Mayor's Cup Challenge in the work plan discussion today. I'm looking forward to hearing feedback from all the council members and I'm very confident that our council will consider all the community input to make the right decisions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Suda. Our next speaker is Connie Cunningham. Welcome, Connie. <clears throat> Good evening, um, Mayor, Vice Mayor. And council members, I'm Connie Cunningham, Chair of the Housing Commission, speaking this evening for myself only. Along with Jean Bedore, I am also sorry to see City Manager Deb Fang leaving the City Manager position. She's led the city admirably during the COVID crisis and for the past two years that she has been here. I think that is a great loss to our city. In regard to the city work plan that we are seeing before us, I am happy to see that the ELI, extremely low income housing, remains on the work plan as item number two. This work item has made good progress in the past two years since Mayor Scharf initially led with putting it on the city work plan. It's for specifically for extremely low income, intellectually developmentally disabled people. Cupertino's general plan clearly states the city's interest in providing housing for all incomes and abilities. Without it, this particular thing, um, project, many, many residents who have been waiting for this housing for decades, literally, would be left without options near their families, current jobs, schools, and services. I appreciate Council Member Way's request to clarify that ELI and BMR housing are being considered. The original ELI project was for intellectually developmentally disabled. The Outback Steakhouse is very recent and is a collaborative project with the county. It is just beginning. I urge the city to make continued progress on the original ELI intellectually developmentally disabled project since it has two years of progress behind it. Also, I would mention items six and seven, the plan to end homelessness. I do urge the council to keep this work as a priority during deliberations tonight. COVID-19 has increased the number of people suffering homelessness. Building housing is the single most effective method to improve this situation. While working <clears throat> on that most basic method, funding services for helping those who suffer homelessness is vital. Note that within that plan, locations for affordable housing are key to solving this seemingly intractable problem of residents suffering homelessness. Funding for building homes has been made available from the state to county nonprofit for-profit organizations. We must find locations. One data point from the general plan is this. Between 2010 and 2040, Cupertino's population is expected to grow by 12,898 residents. I urge the council to maintain the high priority of these items during deliberations this evening, and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Connie. Our next speaker is Jennifer Griffin. Welcome, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, Mayor Darcy. Uh, I am 
I will state that I am very sad that Deb is resigned. I blame HCD directly. I blame ABAG. I blame MTC. I blame RENA. You talk about a waste of time. The housing bills have put our city and every city in this state into complete panic. It is manipulation from the Sacramento level and some of our elected representatives, Scott Weiner, Nancy Skinner, Senator Adkins, ought to be ashamed of themselves. They are elected representatives, but they do not represent everyone in this state. I have spent many, many years coming to these meetings since 2003, and before that, six years at the county with the during the annexation, I went to the, the county meetings, but I have never seen so much drama and anguish from Sacramento and attempts to control local cities, take over neighborhoods in the last three years. You talk about a revolution, the time and the money spent. We're having to defend our lives. Why we... I'm ashamed to live in my neighborhood when I bought this house as a poor single tech worker. Where do these people get off? I, I am, I am, I'm sick of it. It's a travesty. Um, I think that we need to have a very close look at what some of these charities are doing. They are funneling money into the arms of people that are lobbying to take away our neighborhoods? Well, I'm sorry, I have had it. It's time to take our neighborhoods back, to take our cities back. I am proud of our staff. I think we should rehire Deb. She is a jewel. Every staff member is a jewel. But I have never seen so much bedlam in the last three years as I have seen since 2003 and 1995 in the county. And I, I had to sit through the Cisco hearings in from 95 to 2000 about what they were going to do with Coyote Valley. This trumps it. I'm sorry, that's a bad pun. But yeah, I have had enough of it. I blame you. We can't do anything that Rena HCB or ABEG have. They are worthless. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Our next and final speaker is Claudio Bono. Welcome, Claudio. Good evening, uh, Mayor Darcy Paul, Vice Mayor Chan, City Council, City Attorney, City Staff. My name is Claudio Bono. I am the General Manager at the Cupertino Hotel and the Grand Hotel Sunnyvale, but a proud Cupertino resident. Hotels are my passion. When working in the hospitality industry, you never just represent your hotel, you represent the destination. That's why I support the allocation for the Cupertino Visitor Center and the Mayor's Cup Initiative. I think it's a great start to doing meaningful things for our local economy. It will help if we bring individuals that have a working understanding of the hospitality industry and the retail when it comes to economic development. It all has its advantage. Hotels do not just fill up with corporate 77. That's why the leisure market is important. We can travelers are the one that will come and see what our city has to offer. After all, travelers can visit our local shops, go to our local markets, eat at restaurant and being in downtown Cupertino, find the Apple signs and take pictures, play even golf or visit our Cupertino wineries. And soon, hopefully we can actually even have our travels leaving with souvenirs back home. There is a demand for up to two week program to stay in our city, but nobody knows outside our city or state who to contact, what to do, where to go or where to stay, no guidance at all. That is why the creation of the Visitors Bureau is crucial and urgently needed. Small towns have their own Visitors Bureau and yet count only maybe a population of 4,000. So it's time we actually do it. I fully support Mayor Paul's thoughtful initiative which clearly reflect his prior leadership as former president of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. The community can and should work together. And this is exactly the way we should be doing it. Instead of tearing each other down, 
this is how we can actually build each other up. It will provide a place where our city can be represented, a place where information can be given, a better and organized network can begin. In closing, mm -hmm. my wish in the long run is to have the greater Cupertino Convention and Visitor Bureau. All our local businesses, small, medium, and large, will actually benefit from it and provide information to all our visitors that wants to know more regarding our city. Also reclaiming our title of Silicon Valley. Last, uh, wouldn't it be a great idea to have a dedicated space in our city where people around the world can actually celebrate what we're known for? place uh, where tourists can take pictures with the Apple or Facebook sign in one main area so that pictures can actually be taken. And in last seconds, I just wanted to say Cupertino is Silicon Valley, but Silicon Valley is Cupertino. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Claudio. That closes out our public commentary on tonight's special meeting item. I'll take it back to city council for further questions and deliberation. I do see that there is a uh, suggested uh, action and the action is simply to provide any input and adopt the fiscal year 21 to 22 city work program. And so um, for, for clarification purposes, um, I think if we have particular input and you feel my fellow council members particularly strongly about it, I would suggest that um, you put it into um, a, a motion format so that you can uh, gauge the support uh, so that there's clarity as to um, uh, achieving majority support for uh, your comments and what you'd like to see go forward. Uh, that's simply a suggestion. I'll open this up uh, to public, uh, not, I'm sorry, not public comments, but from uh, our, our, our city council. Uh, again, further questions and comments. And if upon the conclusion of your comments, you would like to um, move um, a, a set of recommendations that you'd like to essentially have um, the support of the council for, uh, I'd be happy to uh, entertain those types of motions. So we don't necessarily have to take an omnibus motion is what I'm saying. Uh, feel free to bring them as you conclude your remarks. And we have our first hand from Vice Mayor Chow. Oh, I just have some more questions first. Okay. So, uh, number eight is the Memorial Park. And the description says implement a six month and 12 month plan for Memorial Park improvement. Um, but it's $4.6 million. So this is, is it just planning? That's not just planning, right? It includes construction. So. It's a, a little unclear. And then the, so I guess CIP has more description, but I think here we can be a little more. Um, okay, uh, Director Lee has his camera yeah. uh, on his microphone. So I, yes, I do. Thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. Yeah, that, that's where it gets confusing having things in the CIP and also in the work plan. The uh, we do have three CIP projects, if you recall, proposed for Memorial Park. Um, one is to um, do the uh, repurposing of the ponds. We have the amphitheater, and then we have the, the, the development of the specific plan that takes us all the way up to a conceptual uh, design. So that is what that is what we'll be doing. And um, when I see this item in the work plan to develop that you know, six, 12 month um, plan, we have that proposed in the, in the CIP. Okay. So yeah, can we um, make the objective a little more uh, descriptive, or you can refer to the CIP uh, plan? Yeah, I, I, right yeah, now, I, just planning that is a little confusing. Yeah. Okay, number five, um, the high and the Stevens Creek. I see that the allocated budget is forty-five thousand, and the estimated budget sixty-two thousand. Um, so this doesn't include the legal fees that we have to allocate for this item last um, this year, right? So Correct, this doesn't include that. The scope of this item is to monitor and report on Lehigh, so that involves bringing this to council and having reports on this. Uh, and it also includes the noise and pollution monitoring for those locations. So that item doesn't have a, a corresponding work program item? 
Which item? The Lehigh and Stevens Creek quarries. Um, well, I guess the different the legal issues. We no, that's not a separate work. A, a large sum of money like this year, and I'm, so would we be allocating more for next year? Or do we have remaining budget for that? I might need to defer to either our city attorney or our director. Well, we, we definitely have remaining budget that was established. I forget what fiscal year that was, maybe as early as 1920 uh, for that. And so and that's an example of that, that budget is expended solely for that purpose. And you know that's an that's a issue that, that remains. And as, as uh, Director Alfaro mentioned, we, we did approach that we want to carry that over for that purpose. And that's what's been done. So we, we're still working off of that. Uh, I remember we allocated about $1 million for that project. So how much is spent? How much is remaining? As yeah, I don't, I don't recall it being that much, but I, I wouldn't know that dollar amount. Um, I, I could find out. Okay. Yeah, I'll clarify. We There was a special allocation for um, legal services related to the Lehigh and Stevens Creek um, applications to the county. And, um, and those, we have been working through those and there's still sufficient funds to for that work going forward in the next fiscal year and is included in the budget. Um, but it's not included in the work program. That is budgeted under a city attorney's office. Okay. Correct. The current work program item does not include these legal fees or the legal proceedings. Hmm. So, so why is that not a work program item? Because it's, this is the issue that we actively monitor and I, I know that Roger spent uh, quite a bit of time following also. Because if it's on the work program, we would be asking for updates and <laughs> I can find out where we are. Right? If you'd like to include that in this scope, we can definitely update the item. Yeah, maybe just this item can include that scope, then uh, be okay. Okay, number three, revisit 5G. I see that the budget, so there is zero allocated budget this year, and then we are looking at 250000 for next year. And I thought we are just updating some policies, which we may or may not do, but even if we do it, it's something that even we did last year and it's all done through already allocated staff time. So are we looking at something more with 250,000? Well, yeah, it, yeah it, the, the, the dollar amount is, is being able to, to respond to, to where council may 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 want to go with this, and it, it, that could go a, just a variety of directions. So we're just we're just making sure that um, you know we're just being realistic with what with what the the dollar amount may be. But even we have done all the study, right? And then even if the council revised the standard a little bit, that wouldn't take too much time to increment. So. Why are we? Why do we need two fifteen thousand? Well, I mean, it is identified as a large project within the work plan, so we, um, you know, we just we anticipate um, that it is going to continue to to draw resources to to be responsive to, um, you know, this council and the community's uh, needs on this. But that kind of resource is something the staff has been doing ongoing for the last two years, and that's and. The normal no, it, operation of business. Well, it's it's something that we've absorbed at, at you know it could be argued effectively at the detriment of some other other uh, programs. Um, so this this is just recognizing what the costs uh, are likely to be. Um, so usually when I see this large sum, it's because we need to hire a consultant to do certain thing. Then you'll see um, seventy five thousand. And this two fifty thousand is quite a large. So, all of this will be done in house. But we need uh, a quarter million. Yeah. We not. 
do we plan to hire any consultant for this? I'm not aware aware of anyone planned, but that that so, may be a, a use for this, depending so on what the, the what the requirements the are. Teaching staff time within two fifty thousand. Yeah, I'll, let me add a little something. Having been involved more so with some of the five G responses and some of the data information gathering, um, and uh, forms and or reporting that are being requested by council. We don't know yet, but but I'll tell you the current workload for 5G and there's one and a half, maybe uh, maybe a total of um, one work here. I, don't quote me on that, but um, working on it and the level of detail is just more and more work. So if we if council is entertaining more work, like more reporting um, in addition to the portal that we set up in fall, uh, plus the um, interchange between the carrier and the uh, carrier, the city and the um, the residents or the community members, it, it could ramp up to something that's because it's already kind of beyond a normal level of work. Um, these folks are not working singularly just on 5G and some other things. So you have to, we may not use the whole thing, but we're going to have to put something in there for the amount of effort being expended. It so can't be. I expect to hire a consultant for you will probably end up hiring some sort of um, someone. Well, I can't. I can't figure out. I can't. I don't know the ag actual skill set we would be hiring for, but we would actually have to maybe hire somebody for data. Um, but again, I didn't go into that level of detail uh, on this particular item. But the the workload right now, just on five G and trying to get it all together and managing the interactions with the carrier and the and the community members is um, kind of far outstripping, which is why we, why the response rate is um, not where council necessarily would want it to be. Yeah, because one carrier just filed, just fired a lot of applications, submitted a lot of Yes, and more carriers will be coming, um, right? Yeah. More carriers will so, be coming. So right now the city staff has been absorbing the cost. Yes. Then that means what, if that's the case, I guess I would expect to see a, a request to add extra specific for that, rather than a 250 line item, 250,000 line item here. Because this item usually are not staffing costs, they are usually mm. contractor costs. Contractor yeah. costs. Yeah. Contractor. Well, yeah. we, we just don't know what direction this is going to go. And and um, yep. I don't, I'm not making a statement that anyone does, and we just have to have an amount as a contingency for to be responsive mm -hmm. to how okay. it occurs. I guess I'm confused here because revisit 5G itself is just to modify, re-examine re the standard. What you are saying is whether we, we revisit or not, there will be all these complaints. We will have to respond. That cost would be there. That's not the result of this proposed work program item. That's a result of existing operational cost of handling 5G. These two are two different issues. That's not confuse them. So we expect we need the extra staffing to handle existing, even, even we don't change any standard, right? Even if we cancel this whole item, we expect we will need more staffing to handle 5G um, because the application is coming, complaints are coming. Right. Um, not, not, so let's do your with or without test because I think that's a really good way to do it. So let's say you don't do anything more on the guidelines um, and the current, the current item, sure we could use a little bit more, but not if extra reporting and extra management are needed. Um, again, I don't know what the entire thought process was in developing the $250,000 estimate, but there is, um, I'm just saying that the current, the current level of what's expected out of the staff in terms of the 5G stuff, uh, the 5G items and the, the data that's, that's wanted or people re wanting to review the analysis is something we would have to hire out for. Right, we don't have um, like so, a. So uh, like, let me ask. So then that means we 
should recover the cost from the permit fees that we are charging. Since we're, we're way down the road. Until we scope it, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Um, but you are already seeing a lot of, shouldn't you already have some idea right now how much staff hours is spent on each application? Then shouldn't we try to recover that cost from the permit application now? So maybe we should raise yeah. the cost right yeah. now. Yeah, well, no, we... <clears throat> We're already seeing a lot. Yes, of and yeah, and, and we've done and we've done that in our fee schedule. Um, but this this is not inclusive of staff time. This this is these are things that, um, I mean, they're we're anticipating there's going to be a larger demand and focus on this topic, and and this is a contingency for us to be responsive to that. Uh, this this is not inclusive of our staff time. That's already there. Um, another, oh, sorry, and and then on the first page, there are four columns that are now numbered. So the third, um, the fourth column, is, um, that's the Tory Avenue. And I see that the timeline to finish, it's, it's December 2022, that's end of next year. And um, but then we need to design the building, figure out what would go there, and then we can design. So I'm wondering what's the timeline for when we will be discussing or finalizing what goes in there. Well, we um, we discussed this in the CIP study session May 4th. Um, it is an aggressive timeline. It's to, it's to do the programming and uh, outreach of you know, feasibility up through design and construction of, of that facility. So, I mean, that is our aggressive timeline. Of course, there's gonna be many checkpoints you know, uh, to, with council uh, to get there, but, but that's going to be happening. You know, probably or, you know by spring of next year. So, um, could you remind me how big is this building? It's forty-seven hundred square feet. I recall. I have a a little idea that I think. It's great that we bought this building that's in the city center. I think I like the Cupertino store idea. However, I think this location would be a better location for Cupertino store in the long run. And then I envision that we may have a space for historical society in there. And then because it's at a nicely lo located street corner that's very visible. People can visit the store, visit the museum, pick up merchandise, take pictures. Maybe we'll have some nice sculptures that people that represent Cupertino people can have picture. So then that means I hope that we will get to talk about all the different uses of this building before we go into the final um, construction. Okay. Um, then the the third column, the third row is the Cupertino store. That um, there is not a lot of detail there. So how big is that space that we are talking about? I be I believe it's about eleven hundred square feet. It's either nine hundred or eleven hundred square feet. Um, I think part. I think about nine hundred square feet. Okay. I, I talked as as, as Anjali, I thought, okay. Um, okay. And then the description here is a little misleading. It says, renovate Chamber of Commerce building and use a portion of that space to open Cupertino store. Sounds like we are helping them to renovate their own entire building, but we only use a portion. I assume that's not the case. We are likely, um, we will renovate the 900 square foot space. And I, I spoke to Anjali, I think she envisioned, and, and Mayor envisioned that we would use the space for maybe uh, um, in incubator center or high schoolers can use the meeting room. And the portion of that space is a Cupertino store. I think that's the meaning of this description, but the way it's written, it's um, um, confusing. So I wondered, can we ask 
on if it's Anjali here or maybe she... I, I don't see Anjali in the attendees. Here. Oh, okay. She has some ideas on what can go in the space or maybe mayor can. I think we talk about this anyway, just description is uh, this misleading. Let's clarify that description. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm happy to speak to that. And, um, you know, I, I just want to reiterate, you know, yeah. I, I really appreciated um, the member of the public's comments, uh, Claudia Bona, who you know, indicated, you know, let, let, let's not try to tear each other down. I mean, I think we've all been subjected to personal attacks to one degree or the other, but I'm truly not trying to um, get any kind of an allocation for a personal prep project or anything like that. I mean, I think that this would be a really good um, measure to take to help uh, boost our local retail and restaurant economy uh, by attracting visitors that would normally go um, or um, would ne not necessarily go to a chamber of commerce, but if you were there, at least you would be at a center of uh, information for where to potentially go. Um, and, and I'll also say, you know, I think one of the things that will really help us out with regard to the various um, motivations out there um, when we do get attacked is our, our recent lobbying ordinance. I mean, I, I think we really get, need to get clarity as to where these motivations come from because I just don't see any kind of reason to personally attack me and indicate, well, you know, when I was mayor last time this happened, and when, you know, I, I just, I think that frankly is a bit beyond the pale. Um, and insofar as these suggestions I'm honestly, with 18 months left in my second term, having served the community for six and a half years now, seven years prior to that on Parks and Rec, five years on the Chamber of Commerce board, uh, the last year when I was elected as president of the board, I just feel like I have some um, something to share with regard to what we could potentially be doing um, and you know, helping the community out of the last recession as well in all of those contexts. So. I think if we have a space there and we're looking to have a, uh, a good partnership um, with this organization that was in our city, and I've stated in the past, um, the Chamber of Commerce was actually founded before the city of Cupertino was founded. And um, the merchants that formed the Chamber of Commerce actually got together, formed it in, um, in 1954, the following year, um, they, well, one of them incorporated the city of Cupertino in 1955. So, you know, there, there's intrinsic history there. And I think there's real value to being able to uh, foster that kind of a connection. So that's why I would suggest, you know, looking at this particular space that's now available. Um, as Vice Mayor Chow points out, it is 900 square feet. Um, what I see it as, um, and, and I have to give Vice Mayor Chow her credit, um, because when um, the, the, the CEO of Chamber, Angela Kauser, was mentioning this as um, a conversational point, Vice Mayor Chow indicated, well, maybe it could be some kind of um, incubator space because that's something that we've been looking at in the past. And I just thought with the Mayor's Cup initiative, getting a lot of um, appreciated support from council um, with regard to um, all of our council members rating it very highly, uh, and, and the particular topic on plastics. Um, I just thought when you look at the uh, idea of incubating public ideas, um, it is actually a pretty good um, space if you're looking for an outward facing, you know, public uh, input gathering um, location to um, have something that's not necessarily right at uh, where the Chamber of Commerce conducts its business, but it's in the same building and um, that started a conversation with regard to having a, a fairly unique type of space where we were envisioning originally an online store, uh, all online for Cupertino, um, you know, branded material. But if we were able to have some of that physical material available, um, it's still something that, that draws people. You know, we're not in a complete you know, uh, mail order retail world anymore, there is still something to be said for physical spaces. Um, when people come and eat at our restaurants, they are in a physical space. When they stay at our hotels, they are in a physical space. And so um, we could potentially, potentially have a location where we've never had um, the 
types of materials that people, if they want to show uh, a point of pride in Cupertino, perhaps give you know a, a sweatshirt or a Cupertino branded material to to friends or family. We've never had somewhere they could go to look at that, and I, I think that's a real uh, lacking point in our city. So um, combining those two ideas, you know, I thought, why not try to use this as a, a meeting space, a, a very unique type of meeting space where people can go and get an idea, a flavor of not just our our city, or the civic pride of our city, but also the idea of our public engagement. Um, and, and I thought it paid really good homage to um, the historical roots of what really has made the city tick in the last uh, 66 to 67 years. That being said, I can completely take this or leave this. I mean, you know, if it doesn't get council support, then I, I'm totally fine with it. But um, I, I will say that if it is indeed a partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, Vice Mayor Chow is absolutely right. This is not us taking public money and renovating their space because typically um, their rents are three, $4,000 a month. So you multiply that by 12, you, at our, you are at approximately $50,000. So I'm not suggesting that we take the entirety of this, um, you know, renovate the space and rent it. Um, what I'm suggesting is that we have at least an equal partnership. And I will point out that the Chamber of Commerce um, does have uh, members that are able to go in and fix up a space um, without, uh, you know, having to to you know get to the point where we're going through our public bidding process. And so, if it's a true partnership, we're not fixing up their building. You know, we're getting into a space where they put something on the table that is at least equal to what we would be putting on the table. We could, you know, be getting the material staff added twenty five thousand dollars as, as so called startup costs. And I think we could be creating a, a very singular space for our student population as well. A lot of people in our student population want exposure to uh, working experience, to public experiences, and to be able to tie this to um, you know, a, a council initiative that intersects with public policy, as well as outreaches to you know, various components of the community. I think you know, Chamber is a natural um, intersection point there. So, um, Vice Mayor Chow, thank you for the opportunity to kind of describe and kind of clarify uh, the original genesis uh, of this idea. And, and it is true, it is, it is multifaceted um, to the extent that it's been broken out into two separate um, items at this point. I think that, you know, we don't necessarily have to, um, you know, look at it in the way I'm originally envisioning it, but that's, that's the vision. And hopefully that helps to illustrate uh, what, what I was thinking in terms of, you know, this particular uh, requested allocation. So, sorry, I said I'm done, but can I come in a little more? Um, well, actually, um, Vice Mayor Chasta, this is the only item, and I, I want to be, you know, kind of give people more of a, a free flow of ideas. Uh, but let me go to the other hands raised for a bit, and we can, you know, round robin this. So, in, in order, we have Council Member Way, Council Member Moore, and then council member Willie, uh, council member Way. Thank you, Mayor Paul. I really like the vision and I think it's a great vision to collaborate with the Chamber of Commerce and our local businesses. Um, I would like to twist it a little bit. I visit the chamber very often. We have meetings there. It is a very limited space and it's kind of isolated. This is a great project if we can incorporate into our Tory Avenue um, area and then uh, and also to envision a store. Yes, that's really great and have brochures, but all most of the visitor center is either on Main Street or in hot, close to hotels where people are there. It'd be very difficult to draw people to a location that's isolated. So, you know, the vision we live in Silicon Valley. I love the vision, Mayor Paul. I think it's great. And I listen to Claudia, you know, this collaboration is really great, but we're living this information highway. If we could, yes, have a visual store where people can really see things, but in each hotel, a corner of Main Street, we have a um, electronic, how do I say that? Uh, I'm not so good at that. Electronic information, people can hit it and know where to visit and where the merchandise are offered, where do they can order it or pick it up somewhere. I think that's what we need. We need it in each hotel lobby and in um, visible places um, in front of a restaurant and places in front of the library or you know, are in tour new tour places. 
this is the vision I see. I, I love your vision. And I think we could really expand this and work with our merchants, not just bring merchants, uh, people to them, but also bring people to our stores, to our online uh, how does it's not really online a physical place that's attractive you can you know if i walk on the street and i see attractive thing hey look at this and i would can play with it see things that's my vision I, I and you're to add to your vision i think it's really a great uh, combination mm -hmm. i i really don't think the chamber area is a, a, a location that's attractive and it's very small there's no way that the high schools can go there to in incubate incubation it, it's a it's a really small place and it's an isolated place. So I'm hoping this vision can be expanded to areas that people will really visit. And so I don't quite get my, if I don't quite get my vision, this may be uh, all my fellow council members can add to it. So I really like the idea. And I think to work with the chamber is really great. And we can build this up when we're doing our, um, you know, total revision and then work with the main street, work with other developments everywhere in the corner of our Cupertino where people are there in every hotel lobby, that's where we can really, um, um, you know, tell people where to visit in Cupertino, where the wineries, the great pictures there. And yes, a physical place too. The chamber is just not my, I think it's the location is just too isolated. That, that's my comment. Well, I appreciate your, your input, uh, Councilman Wood. And, it, you know, it, it's, precisely the kind of ideas that you're sharing right now is 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 the crux of the vision it's it's a, a matter of creating spaces where people can exchange ideas and that can be brought to action um so you know whether it's put here or somewhere else i mean i'm just really glad that you know you're you're utilizing your your imagination and creativity to think of something like a touch screen kiosk at various places and, and i will you know I'll, I'll defend a bit the you know original idea um, it's true that space probably wouldn't accommodate more than you know seven or eight people at a time um, comfortably who are in a working condition. But I think you know putting some resource into it, you could actually turn it into a, a very usable space in that regard. And, and again, you know it is where the existing um, chamber of commerce of our city um, sits at the moment. But uh, but by, I really I greatly appreciate your thoughts, and that's really what it's about in terms of um, my perspective, trying to get people. You know, kind of getting the the, the, the the brain juices flowing, so to speak. So um, we have Council Member Moore followed by Council Member Will. Council Member Moore. Thank you. Okay, so I I'm personally opposed to to renovating uh, the the chamber building. However, it might be a nice location uh, if you can coordinate with the Valco developer to have a visitor center at at Valco because it's going to be a very large. Um, project. Uh, I have a question uh, and it has to go going back to our a previous um, uh, item that we had, item 16 on uh, May 18th. And I'm wondering if, if we did approve this. I'm uh, concerned about some of the budget carryovers which are showing up in, in attachment C, which is showing interim city hall having a budget carryover of $465,012 and a new city hall with a budget carryover of uh, $3.5 million. Um, and there's another line in here, city hall and permit center remodels for $45,000. So I this, I'd like some uh, clarification about this uh, because in our uh, work program, we have uh, an item just to look at alternatives um, with city hall. And that's, uh, to my recollection, that's uh, 25,000. Yes, investigate alternatives to City Hall. However, this, this uh, amended budget detail as of March 31st, 2021 is showing a huge amount of allocation. So I would like to have that uh, question answered by staff. Okay, um, so there are multiple parts and um, concerns uh, reflected in Councilmember Moore's question. Uh, would anyone on staff, first of all, like to talk about uh, the initial allocations uh, to City Hall, um, and one of them was more than three million. One of them was somewhere around four hundred something thousand. Director Lee. Yeah, so those um, allocated amounts—that sounds correct, uh, Councilmember Moore. Uh, as as we have a proposed project for our for City Hall Community Hall, um, that that very may, very well may lead to. Um, 
renovation of our current city hall. And that's been estimated to cost you know, 40, in a $40 million range. So the, uh, the idea of those funds being there, they would only be used for a purpose for the city hall. There's no intent of staff to be spending those monies right now, but they are there as, as you may think of them as a, as a reserve for what may happen when we complete that process that's being proposed for city hall and community hall. Okay, so we we actually were discussing doing a seismic retrofit, and so I'm a little surprised to see new city hall and an interim city hall. I can understand the interim part, but the having it labeled as new city hall um, that that concerns me. Uh, so it's, you know, it's uh, let, let, let me jump in. I want mean, to I want to be able to clarify this. We don't want to put any kind of we we want to put complete information out there. Um, that is a, a holdover from the Valco specific plan, uh, correct, Director Lee? Um, that, that was yes. part of the idea that we would have a warm shell created for City Hall. Right? Yeah, that, that, is, cor that is correct, that is correct. Right. Okay, so given the fact that that is, that's just not there anymore. I mean, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, that's not there. And so would it perhaps make sense because that the underlying project's not there anymore uh, and, and I believe this is actually a recommendation by staff that we take this allocation, or I'm not sure where the 400,000 fits in it, but I think that's part of the same thing. Would it make sense if that's the case to take those two allocations and basically say, we're no longer allocating it for this purpose uh, because the underlying project itself is just no longer there. And that, and that would be at council's discretion. I, I, I recall this coming up, and it was council member Willie had, had brought this this point up, and we, um, and I and I and I believe we went back to to clarify how how those projects are on hold um, because you know someone looking at this and says, well, you know, here we are looking at a new city hall for for this amount of money while we have this other process going. So I, I recall we went back to clarify that we aren't, you know, these are on hold. Um, you know, until a future date, and that and that would would only occur after we we do, um, you know, the study at, for the current city hall and community hall. Right, okay. you get another project, right? I mean, not to yeah, you know, kind of repeat myself. Okay, so if we had another project, we could always we could always allocate these numbers again, right? Because you know these numbers are kind of specific to the um, prior project that this was tied to, because the warm shell required a certain amount of. Uh, money, uh, the, the 400,000, I believe, some, some odd. And then at another point, it required the 3 million something. And those were tied to that specific project, right? Yeah, they were. They were, yeah. yeah. They were. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, with Council Member Willie having, you know, expressed that concern and now um, Council Member Moore is expressing it, I, I just, I feel it makes complete logical sense. I mean, if, if part of the work plan item associated with City Hall is a matter of cleaning up our, you know, our backlog, so to speak. Um, I mean, you're freeing up essentially $4 million. I mean, to, to me, that makes that makes complete sense. And frankly, something that probably should have been done at around the time, probably in conjunction with um, the specific plan no longer being a, a project on the table. So thank you, Council Member Moore. I just wanted to put in that clarification as to where we sat and, and where the context of that um, a couple of numbers were. You also had a, a number of other issues that you raised in your first uh, comment slash question. Did you want staff to speak to those other items at this point and to remind us what those were? Well, yeah, it's, it's a little difficult from the interruption to uh, go back to that. Um, I do actually, uh, there was a member of the public that was concerned about us wasting money and uh, I am very respectful about that concern and, and I share it as well. Uh, so, it, but I don't appreciate the ad hominem attacks that occurred. I think that those are inappropriate. Um, so, uh, also, when I look at this uh, item, the proposed city work plan, the on the first page, uh, it, to my recollection, there was a request for a Cupertino store and then a logo change, but I don't recall the Chamber of Commerce item being added on there. So that, to me, was was kind of a surprise and. Uh, I, for me, um, with the request for funding for that, I had made a request that Stockholmeyer 
um, he, he worked on. We've owned that uh, building and let it uh, fall into some level of disrepair since 2002. And uh, it's not on the work plan. We have an obligation, according to our municipal code, to maintain our buildings, maintain our structures. And yet it's not being done. And we're now it's at a point where it has to become a work plan item. Um, and, and we're not being good stewards for the property that we already have. And so I, I don't like the idea of, of galloping off and, and to go uh, renovate someone else's structure when we can't even take care of what we've got. Uh, and also with that, with regards to our, you know, the seismic retrofits that need to be uh, conducted in the city, uh, we, we definitely need to do that. Um, I have another question regarding, uh, we supported city councils unanimously supported the plan to end homelessness for the county. And so I am concerned about the money that is being um, appropriated for that locally, if we are going to be participating in a regional uh, countywide program. And I was wondering if perhaps Deb has an update on that and what is envisioned um, for us to be doing in the future in order to assist that because I don't want it to be like our shuttle program where Cupertino is is doing a shuttle program and Mountain View's doing one and Palo Alto everybody's doing their own we're duplicating the work and we're collectively wasting a lot of money so do you have any um, update on that uh, if you mean by update what our part in, in the um, county's plan to end homelessness yes you're correct that um, of course, that's not what you're asking me to do, but I'll, I'll summarize. Uh, each city is being requested to, to adopt that, but underneath there is a city effort to do something that supports that um, plan. So with the support of that plan, the items that you see um, that would be related to that in the work program are part of the city's effort to support that plan with what's happening in Cupertino, if that makes any sense. Ben, did you want to add anything to that? No, no, that's 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 correct. We um, council, council uh, I believe, in December 20, 2020, uh, uh, endorsed the county's community plan to end homelessness 2020 2025. So um, we are participating with the county, and you, you see the work program item that that um, identifies uh, that particular item as well. So no, you're you're correct, Ben. Uh, now, with regards to the drone show, um, I, I personally uh, would want to have more um, public engagement to see if uh, who is interested in doing this. Uh, I'm a little concerned that it might be something that's more appropriate for Apple to have for their uh, for their employees or for uh, Great America to to do this or or some some somewhere else and and some other entity doing it before we be the first one uh, as a as the city doing this. Um, so I I'm definitely concerned about um, that and I will leave it at that. I'll ask some other questions in a, in a few minutes. Thank you. Okay, great. We have council member Willie next followed by, uh, I think Vice Mayor Chow, you've, you've had a turn. So um, let, let's stop it at council member Willie for now. Council member Willie. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Boy, uh, I, I'll start with, you know, that I've heard a lot of uh, good suggested objective clarification and definition on these different uh, items, but I'm not hearing that those necessarily are being incorporated. And so my first one is, you know, clarification that you know, I'll go ahead and list the the items that I'd like more detail and clarification put in them. How do we direct staff? I mean, we're all here to say, hey, we agree with these uh, additional clarification and description. But I, I'm worried that after this whole process that all our comments you know, prior work plan meetings brought us the updates in the subsequent 
and we're doing one more iteration, but to kind of uh, close the issues tonight, if we can say yes, uh, when, when we bring up a particular item, like item number two, and this additional definition and stuff, okay, do we all agree, or is there a majority? Okay, staff, you've got your, your uh, direction on that, and then we kind of press on. So at the end of tonight, we say, okay, whew, you know, we, we now have better definition. Everybody's uh, in agreement. Work plan's ready to go. Yeah, um, you know, that's a great point, John. Um, and, and that was what I was trying to get at at the very uh, beginning of the um, uh, this period when I was suggesting that council, um, when you feel the time is right individually, bring a motion. And if you have, for example, six things that you want adjusted, I would, I would recommend that you make six separate motions. And if you want to try great. to uh, gather support um, and, and so I think this is a good round initially so that we can kind of hear others' thoughts uh, and get an idea, you know, kind of like an informal straw poll type idea of uh, where others are. You know, you know, feel free to modify your asks. And so um, I, I will just let everyone know if you put something on the table, I will go ahead and second it so that we can go ahead and take uh, a gauge of counsel and that, and that staff has clear direction going forward. Um, and, and hopefully that when we bring the work program back, uh, this session will have satisfied us that, you know, look, if we have particular ideas that we want to see changed, at least it just didn't go into a void because, you know, um, I, an individual council member alone made that comment and there wasn't a clarity as to whether that change wanted, was, was, was to be directed by the majority of council. So, so thank you for that comment. And uh, where I see us at right now, is that we're all speaking um, and collecting our thoughts. And so if you are ready with a list of items, feel free to start taking them off and getting the ball rolling on, on that uh, process that could give um, very clear direction going forward. Okay, great. So I'll start with item number two. On previous year uh, work plans, it seemed my memory is that we actually had one that dealt with housing and identifying additional sites. And I'm not seeing that in our current work plan, but I would like to include it in item two, the ELI with Mary Street in Outback. I would like to add the uh, description that it includes the city's uh, ability to be looking for sites. I believe in like the last six months, uh, a resident alerted us that there is a house on McClellan Road on a large lot that was available and, you know, via an email to us <clears throat> and that maybe the city wanted to look into that. If we don't have a owner for doing something like that, then it's going to be a non-issue. But if we make that part of this task, be on the lookout for property. Okay, case in point. Here, let's assume here's a site on McClellan Road. It's a 0.5 uh, acre site. And so city staff would simply do a quick feasibility check on it. Um, is it uh, sandwiched in high density or a very uh, 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 traditional neighborhood that would not fit a multi-story uh, even though uh, low income uh, type of thing, and then say these are the options that the city council could consider. Okay, it would be single story and it would be small units and this and that. And at least it would get the ball rolling. So my motion on that is to add to you tonight uh, item two to be uh, investigating additional uh, sites for housing, preferably um, BRM or ELI, you know, um, housing. So that's my first ask. Okay, so that's uh, just a correction, uh, BMR. And, and so this this item is about ELI. Um, okay, so the okay, Outback Steakhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so this 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 item is specifically describing ELI housing 
on city owned property along Mary Avenue, as well as the Outback Steakhouse location. So, so John, you would like to expand it to include BMR generally, right? And um, to have um, the ability to look at other sites for potential uh, ELI or BMR housing. Absolutely, yes. Well, well stated, thank you. Okay, I'll go ahead and second that. Um, did, uh, l let's go ahead and, um, uh, Vice Mayor Chow, did you have your hand raised for a comment or a question on this? Uh, comment. Okay. So I, I wasn't done. Uh, are you taking well, I, I realize that, but you have a motion on the table. I want to be able to get oh. that disposed of before you go to your next item. Which okay. item is that? What's that? Uh, what's the number? The EOI? It's, it's item number two. It's on page uh, three of the proposed city work program document. Okay, um, Council Member Wade, did you have a question or a comment on this as well? Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a comment, please. Um, Council Member Willie, that's a great idea to explore new uh, sites, but work plan needs to be specific, specific. This work plan is about the Mary Avenue for ELI and our best steakhouse for EM, uh, either ELI or a below market rate, and a specific work plan the staff can work on. That what your other proposal, it would have to be another work plan because we want specific plans to be done. And I love your idea to explore other areas, but I think in our arena allocation, that's where we probably will put that in there too. So I think we need to stick to the specific plan and uh, to both locations. I did recommend at the BM below market rate housing because that's what a our back steakhouse with the county, that's what a state floor. We, if we just have ELI housing for development disabled, we're not including the state house, our back state house options. So I like your idea, but I think it's a totally two different work plan. And work plan needs to be specific so that with the, with the budget, so we can, the staff can actually work on it. Okay, uh, council member Moore, you're next with a hand up. Uh, did you have a question or a comment on council member Willie's proposal on the table? Uh, yes. So uh, how is this process going to work? Because you, you're allowing one one work plan item to be discussed and modified. So I'm going to assume because you've started down this process road that you're going to allow each and every one of these, if we want to do some modification to it, that you're going to allow each and every one of these work plan items to um, be discussed and um, altered. Is that correct? Uh, I, I hope it doesn't go to each and every one of the work plan items, but, but yes, that's essentially um, okay. what I see as the, the purpose of our discussion. Okay, so I had, uh, at, a, at a previous uh, meeting, I had mentioned there is a, a very large, um, it's a storage area off, off of McClellan, um, and it's next to a church area and residential. I don't know if that is a viable site. Uh, it was running for about $8 million. Um, However, I agree with uh, Council, Councilman Willie to uh, look at other sites and not lock ourselves in, and we don't know what's going to be happening down the road. Plus, um, I, you know, I have mentioned it before about Mary Avenue because this was a project uh, that was a street area that had come to um, the Planning Commission before because it has the uh, the the green um, stormwater infrastructure plan for it in order to have the, the berming and uh, groundwater recharge. Uh, so there are other areas in the city where this could potentially um, be built. And I don't think that locking ourselves in is in our best interest. My other question regarding this process, if we are going item by item, I would assume that that means that we're going to have a vote we're doing a deliberation on it on this particular motion yes or and so okay. you know as a result i i would really appreciate it if we would kind of stay on focus on the particular change that's being um you know proposed i, okay. I mean i realize the scope is very broad and looking at other sites could implicate the entire geography of cupertino but i would ask that we not try to do that and just try to speak to that particular change uh, okay, so this is basically uh, to add BMR plus other sites. Yes. Yep, simple. Okay, so but so we're going to finish our deliberation on this item, and you'll call a vote. 
and we'll, and then we'll move on to the next. Is that correct? That is the idea. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, Vice Mayor Chow, did you already speak to this? Did I call I, My comment was for another item, but I'll speak from this first. I will come in. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to speak to it if you didn't have an original comment, but um, it's a motion on the table for uh, Council Member Willie's uh, request I'll to modification. Second that. Did anyone second it? I seconded it. Oh, I already said okay. that I'll provide so, a second. Do to you all. want to hear my comment on this item before we vote? No, please do. Yes, okay. please make the comments. So this particular item, actually the description already is not specific. It talks, it's a jumble of stuff. It talks about two EOI sites plus find a way to build moderate income and engage with Habitat for Humanity. These two items actually don't even belong there because that's different from EOI. And I think Council Member John, I mean, Willie's proposal of adding on the idea that we actively identify on a res for residents or even Housing Commission members to help identify a site that might open up at any time. And this is unrelated to housing element sites because we'll have to identify those sites by the next, end of next year. But in the next whole eight year housing element cycle, if any house comes up for sale or anything, we could then identify that maybe it's a good site for a good uh, ELI housing that we never know. So this is uh, saying that, okay, we should only look out for that. And I think that's a really good idea. Maybe it should even be a policy we include in the housing element that we proactively look for sites to develop, not just waiting here for something to fall on our lap. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor Chow. And Councilmember Moore, you're, uh, well, let me go back to Councilmember Willie, whose hand is still is raised. Oh. Did you want to speak to the comments that were made? I'll leave it where it's at, and that we can vote on the next item. I might provide some additional process uh, suggestion. Okay, sounds good. Councilmember Moore. Okay, um, just for clarification, are we all on attachment B, the red line, or are you on attachment A? I have A. A. Okay, so you're on A already. So we're going to go to A2. And my A2 does not say Habitat for Humanity. Mine says consider options to develop ELI housing for developmentally disabled individuals on city owned property along Mary Avenue, as well as the Outback Steakhouse location. And that's it. So that's my, that's my attachment A. Do you? People all have that? Yes. Okay. So it's not saying that, right. And then all we're doing with this motion is to add uh, BMR plus other sites. Oh, that's good. I, I was wondering, are we still engaged with that, with them? But how come but, it's different? Uh, the previous version had it. The previous version had Habitat for Humanity and now attachment A has been simplified. Yeah, the uh, staff put the latest one in the envelopes and so i picked this one up i want to say on friday they sent out an email saying that they had printed out updated work plan and left it for us i see i'm looking at attachment b the red line version. oh the b yeah, yeah. no wonder okay 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 great um so i'm going to go ahead and ask for a roll call vote on council member Willie's uh, proposed change regarding item number two's uh, objective. And so Madam City Clerk, would you please conduct that roll call vote? Council member Moore? Aye. Council member Way? Nay. Council member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries with way voting no. Okay, um, Councilmember Willie, you had a process-oriented question. I, I, I think maybe it makes sense to go in a roundtable uh, in terms of you know, descriptions of proposed changes. Is that 
something that was um, captured in your suggestion or what was your process oriented suggestion? Um, I, I was just going to suggest to the council. So we already added work plan items to this coming work plan. And I, I feel that we're not allowed to add new work plan items. So if we don't capture the essence of what we're after tonight here, we cannot do it until next year's work plan. And that's why even though it may not fit in a nice clean box, as long as it captures the essence, if, if a resident sent us an e for this case in point, if a resident sent us an email that they saw there was a, uh, a site for sale and we have nobody at city staff responsible for something like that, it's not going to get considered, in my view, it's not going to get considered. It's going to be an email that's just going to go un, un, uh, unread, undealt with. But at least if we have something like this, our city manager could take the email over to the desk of the person assigned to this task and say, by the way, here's a site that's been identified. Um, could you have someone, uh, you know, spend uh, five or ten hours and investigate how many of these little homes could they pop on this site? Uh, and is, is it even uh, feasible? And just leave it at that. They don't have to prove anything. And then that comes back to us before it's water under the bridge. That's my, you know, these other work plan items. If we see something that we think would somehow improve the work plan item, let's Let's go ahead and put it there. We're, we're not trying to tie anybody's hands or, or force anything, but we want to be sure. City manager can come back to us at any time and say, you know what? 10-acre site just became available. It's going to take uh, 200 hours. Will you fund that? Okay, John, let's go um, let, let, let's let's on since we have approved your modified changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm so, just um, alerting. I see what you mean by the process-oriented uh, suggestion that you have. Uh, well, let me let me as chair of the meeting and in the interest of um, and this is great. You, you passed it four to one. Um, and I think it's a very legitimate um, mechanism to kind of gauge that. Um, let me let me go each to the council members and give them each an opportunity um, to 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 bring forth a suggestion uh, on a modification of the work plan. Uh, that we have in front of us in attachment A before we go back uh, to your, your second item. And so the next hand that I have raised is from Vice Mayor Chow, followed by Councilmember Moore, followed by Councilmember Wei, and then I'll, then I'll make my first suggestion after that. So Vice Mayor Chow. Okay, so I'll first finish my earlier comment regarding, um, first regard, regarding the, the chamber space. Okay, so I think, yeah, we, I think I'd like to, um, I think Dar Mayor responded to the resident on the attack. I'd like to clarify that before that, there was interim city manager. Before the interim city manager, the previous city manager retired. And then Deb, we, when we interviewed Deb, we interviewed some really experienced, excellent city manager. But the majority of the council saw that Deb, the talent in Deb, even though she has no city experience, but we saw that she. Uh, has my, my, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Chow. I, I really <laughs> need to call a point of order on this. Um, we're, we're, we're here to focus on the work plan. And while I appreciate your sentiments, um, I, I think that. Uh, we, we should allocate time at another uh, okay. point to talk about what you're you're delving into at this at this point. So um, within the parameters of what I'm asking for, if you have any kind of modifications to a work program item that we have in front of us in attachment A, um, please please make the comments to that, and okay. then we can consider it. Um, I think the reason I say that also is because I think that's not hold grudges against each other. That's, uh, we, we might disagree on one issue, but we might agree on a hundred other issues. So at first I was on the fence about the chamber item. 
and you know, we know, you know our history. But then I've been friendly with Anjali, and so I thought I'll call her up and find out what exactly she has in mind, and and then that's why I called her, and uh, I have. So I have called her on um, occasion on this kind of thing. So I think let's move on. We can be friendly on other issues, even though when we disagree on one. So I had a good discussion with Angeline. Here's what she has in mind. I think in many cities, you see chamber is right next to visitor center because that is where a lot of times visitors come to a, um, a place you they, they here you can find out where to eat, where to shop, and you might pick up coupons. And this is where you can we can promote businesses for Cupertino. And so it might be a natural fit. Fit. However, I also am concerned about the space is too small. So like I said earlier, I would rather maybe eventually we move it to Torrey when it's ready, but it's not ready now. And then now we want to help with the economical recovery. So maybe in the interim, we can do the pilot in chamber and Anjali will help run the program. And the hundred, I believe a hundred thousand is not all for renovation. It's including also programming. And then she can hire interns to help uh, men, men the store. And, and then there will be an agreement between city and the chamber that's mutually beneficial. So that because we won't be paying the rent, and then they, 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 so we will both have have something, but also give something, and is that that's that's. So that's what I got after the conversation. I thought this is a good idea to has a pilot, so that we don't have to wait for another year for Tory to finish to start this to to promote business. Um, but yeah, eventually I do envision that I want this to be moved to Tory, consider a store, <coughs> maybe a small business center, <coughs> and historic museum. And uh, also Cupertino actually has a lot of home businesses. They can, this will be a venue for them to display their product. They can meet their clients. And uh, also another idea that in response to Hanway's um, envision that we want to have something that can bring Cupertino community together. I, am, I have English, had this in mind for a while. I wish we can have a, maybe a weekly Friday afternoon gathering in front of the plaza, in front of between City Hall and the library. It could be a, like from five to seven o'clock, a Cupertino Got Talent show. Um, kids can sign up to do a two, three minutes uh, song, speech, or anything, or dance. And or it could be a line dancing because in, in China, in Taiwan, we often have a plaza that people get to, together to, there to dance. So this uh, will be a community thing. It doesn't have to be always in plaza. We can uh, move Mr. around Mr. to Mr. the Mr. shopping Mr. malls. I, I, I apologize so, for interrupting you, but um, okay. we're trying to identify particular items and see if there are modifications to be made. I understand okay. what you're saying, but we can't bucketize that into a particular item um, unless you're looking to um, bring forward a motion where we would be uh, affecting multiple items at the same time, which I'm uh, happy to I entertain. I do have a motion but, but with please multiple be, items. Well, I'm sorry? I do have a motion with multiple items that I'm getting into. Okay, so you're basically putting that forward at this point? Yeah. Okay. And did you, did you, well. So I finished uh, my pitch for the weekly Friday gathering. Right, so but, but I ask that you do one at a time. And the reason I ask that you do one at a time is that people might not okay. agree with one, but they might agree with another. So if you could, you know, put put one motion up forward, um, because of course with, with Councilmember Willie, he put forward one, we talked about it, we voted on it, right? And so I ask that you do the same thing. Put one forward, let's talk about it, let's vote on it. And so now you've, you've talked about two things. You've talked about um, the, uh, the, uh, the store, the Cupertino store, as well as your idea about um, some kind of you know, performance art uh, space. 
So, so I ask that you put forward one thing so that we can, you know, get council direction on that particular item first. Okay. So here we have um, on row two, the prep program and Cupertino store and Tory Dual. Should I go that in order? Um, let me let you make that determination, but pick one and let's move forward with that. Okay, maybe I'll just um, do row three first since I just spoke about that. So I hope this item we could add more details and clarify that uh, the 100,000 covers renovation and programming cost with an agreement signed between the chamber and the city that's mutually beneficial. Okay, um, I, I would I would be willing to support a motion that directed that before any allocation is made that we make uh, make specific details as to what is being covered, and that we generate an agreement um, between the city and chamber if we go forward with this. I, in fact, I, I'm even willing to take the money off the table largely, and say let's go forward for the time being. Uh, with, with a with enough to you know uh, obtain the store items so that we go forward with the store and try to uh, make this work plan item an investigation um, and uh, interface with the with the chamber of commerce um, to see whether this becomes um, a tangible possibility you know once those details are defined so would you be willing to afford that motion? Um, because you know, obviously, uh, the monetary ass is a bit of a heartbreak, um, a heartache uh, point for some. Um, or, or, or did you want to keep that allocation in your motion? I think a hundred thousand would be like a cap, right? No more than that. And then we are not likely we will get a break on the rent. Um, Okay, so we'll, we'll go forward with what you have written here. Um, so, Vice Mayor Chow, you bring forward a motion uh, as as described and as written that you want to clarify that $100,000 covers the renovation and the programming costs with an agreement signed with the chamber that's mutually beneficial with the city. And um, with regard to the store, staff has added $25,000 uh, for the materials costs of, of store. Um, so are you specifying that $100,000 includes that cost for materials as well? No, I think I'm just adding what's not there. So 25 for, so this is already there, so I didn't put. Okay, so that's that's there and what we have on attachment A. Okay, so before proceeding, uh, we would enter into an agreement and that would need to be entered into, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask council um, if there are uh, comments to your motion on the table uh, I'll start with Councilmember Moore and then Councilmember Way and then Councilmember Willie. Councilmember Moore. Um, thank you. Uh, yes, I certainly support the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. And I, many years ago, uh, had attended uh, many Chamber of Commerce meetings uh, in the Torrance area. And we certainly need to support our small businesses and our large businesses in Cupertino. However, as a matter of principle, I will not support Cupertino renovating and or occupying in any way the Chamber of Commerce building. We have many structures and which, which need to be worked on in Cupertino and I've you know, brought up the Stockelmeyer house. So you know, we're ignoring our own responsibilities that we have to our own community and you're off going to benefit the chamber. And uh, we also do have a very long standing relationship with the Chamber of Commerce where staff time is used uh, to present to the Chamber LAC meetings. And uh, we do have a very uh, cordial relationship with them in the city. So I do think that there was some mischaracterization there, which is which was unfortunate. Um, so I cannot support this, uh, this motion at all. Okay. 
Uh, let's go to Councilmember White before Councilmember Wood. Um, okay, um, I totally understand um, Councilmember Moore's position, and I, I do like this project. So um, I would like to uh, propose a substitute motion. Okay, what's your substitute motion? Okay, it's the it's a city work plan that's to investigate the um, chamber of com working with chamber of commerce to develop you know, uh, merchandise corporation internship programs, but to develop a identify future store locations within the city that's city owned. And uh, this is a one year program. So it, it's more like an investigation uh, coming up with, I don't know exactly how to say it, coming up with a plan, it's a planning. And I like what Dar uh, Mayor Paul says, we really don't need a monetary because this is a planning session that um, we can plan with the city of, uh, the Chamber of Commerce collaborators. Um, okay, somebody needs to put this champ this motion with for with me, and the motion is to a, a city plan to plan with the uh, collaborate with C uh, Chamber of Commerce to plan a um, collaborative work with uh, future merchandise and locations, maybe possible kiosks. So uh, it's a planning session instead of a monetary, and monetary can come back after we. Um, have the plan set, set, set for us. Does that make sense? I, I, I think I get the general gist of what you're saying. <laughs> you're, you're really talking about at this point having um, discussions with- um, Right, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a solid discussion that we're gonna come up with a plan. Where are the merchandise gonna be? Uh, where is the future, um, you know, look at the city, properties, what is it going to be in Tory? Is it going to be um, what uh, Council Member Moore says, locations? So secure a location for a store, a vis visitor center, but work with the chamber to promote uh, where chamber think is the best place to place the uh, merchandise. So it, it, it's because I think we need to plan it ahead of time first. So this is a, is a city work plan to, um, to work with the chamber to come up with a plan. I, I mean, I appreciate the sentiment of um, what you're expressing. I'm just not sure whether it's is properly captured in a in a motion format at this point. So, um, I, if you, um, I I don't want to put you know words in what you're intending. Can you can interpret it. <laughs> um, okay, as the maker of the motion, Vice Mayor Chow. So. I think my motion says to come up with a mutually beneficial agreement. That means we will be having a conversation on what kind of um, store it is. And then my other motion I was going to make, but I didn't, is row four, which is the Tory. I think my vision is eventually, I hope the store will move to Tory. Then the, at the chamber location is a pilot. And then we are already developing the concept, work, working things out. Um, so that was the idea. Um, um, oh, let me let me see if um, and 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 and, but, and, and Council Member Way, um, I let, let let me respectfully ask if I can try to modify the motion on the table to speak to your concern. Uh, yes. Is that okay? If we yeah, okay. absolutely. Right, great. Thank you, um, Vice Mayor Chow. Could we perhaps define a time limit to your motion to state that um, the beginning of the fiscal year is July 1st and to work in the three, uh, the first quarter of the fiscal year, uh, July, August, and September to see if, uh, to, to see if um, a draft agreement can be, re can, can be um, presented to council for approval. Uh, and if by that time, it, a draft agreement can't be reached, then we will go ahead and uh, not proceed since um, you know, you're know you already a quarter of the way through the fiscal year by that point. And it's probably unrealistic to consider um, a pilot program if you have to uh, renovate and stock and um, you know get the uh, various logistics going. So, so would you be open to that? You know, basically defining the first quarter as a discussion period. If nothing comes of that discussion um, that that is uh, presentable to city council, we simply move on uh, with the idea, having vetted it, having considered some of the you know ideas that perhaps we can use going forward in the future. 
if, for instance, 10455 Torrey or some other property becomes, um, you know, available for this particular type of use. So maybe then in case, maybe then we don't put a dollar amount since we will just be exploring? Yeah, remove the dollar amount. Just, I mean, just make the work program uh, work program item in discussion to see if that's something that uh, could materialize a, uh, a proposed agreement that would be presented to council sometime, um, you know, within the first quarter of the upcoming fiscal year. I, I'm completely comfortable with that. You, you know, honestly, it's, it's, this is not a sense of like, you know, oh, let's take money and allocate it. You know, I, I think let, let's let's move the conversation along if we can. And, um, you know, if, if you'd be willing to make that your motion, um, then I'd be happy to have that as the modified second. Then do we still put the Cupertino store of merchandise? Um, well, well, yes, that would be part of the discussion, right? And, you know, I, I suppose this discussion that we're having right here would functionally serve as notice that there might be a, a mid-year budget adjustment if this is a successful discussion, so to speak. So we, we place this discussion in the first quarter. Um, if it, like I say, materializes into a, a workable agreement that we approve, then we seek a mid-year budget adjustment. And, uh, you know, all great. At least we've had that discussion and started thinking about you know, this particular topic. Okay, let me read it. Okay. Explore the potential of location of Cupertino store and high school incubator center. Do we want to add that? Um, maybe student, um, you know, student, student incubator center. Or, or I would say, let's call it a public, public incubator center, public incubator center. And I, you know, I, I, I noticed, um, Council Member Moore's concern at Chamber of Commerce or and or other locations. Because oh, potentially. I mean, also yeah. Personal thing, Chamber of Commerce is not a great location. Okay. With right. agreement that's mutually beneficial. Well, with a mutually beneficial agreement uh, yeah. at, at, Cooper, at Chamber. Chamber of Commerce or. And or other locations. Right. Well, let's let, let's let Vice Mayor Chow make that. Yeah, right, and add back the award agreement, good. Okay, so Vice Mayor Chow, if you could add after Chamber of Commerce or another potential and, location. We could have a couple locations in hotels or this or in or other locations. Or or other locations mm -hmm. with a mutually beneficial mm -hmm. agreement mm -hmm. um, regarding, instead of plus 25,000, regarding, uh, and, and replace 25,004 with regarding. So we can know store merchandise. Right. Providing a draft, draft proposal, uh, provided that a draft proposal is approved by the council for first quarter. Physics. Right, and, and, and everything from 25,000 to that, delete and attempt to provide a draft proposal for consideration by the council in quarter one of fiscal year 21 and 22 and attempt to provide a draft approval, a, a draft proposal for consideration as opposed to is, is approved for consideration by council, by the council in quarter one of fiscal year 21, 22. That's October? Um, that's July, August, that's by the end of September. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think we necessarily need to be, you know, kind of a set an artificial deadline by it. I mean, I, I'd be open to. I mean, since we're not putting a monetary all allocation there, then, you know, um, uh, and delete the mon delete the dollar, the twenty five thousand dollars in the line above. Okay. Um, half one by by the end of December. I guess that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can move fast, and we have time to move fast if we um, agree on something. Right? I'll make it a first time. I mean, I'm just wondering whether, it, since there's no dollar amount attached to this, why not just make it part of the, the entirety of the fiscal year pro, work program? 
and then we can okay, you know kind of discuss it because we're adding other locations as well you know yeah i so thought okay. if you're considering so many things we want okay you know. by the end of fiscal year 21 22 then um just yeah don't set an artificial order limit on it yeah, I mean, this is very similar to kind of moving a proposed drone show to, you know, a year back, right? I mean, I think this is a completely legitimate, you know, um, change. And I, I appreciate the discussion. So let's, um, um, Vice Mayor Chow, if you're okay with it, let's make this your motion. You move to um, change uh, the second item, I think it is, isn't it? Um, yeah, this is a still vital yeah. strange. It sounds like the agreement is only regarding Cupertino store merchandise. Uh, re including. Regarding... Um, is it including? Um, okay, with a mutually beneficial agreement, including a physical location or Cupertino store merchandise. Including, okay, potential Cupertino store merchandise. That's fine. Um, and maybe come at, like, comma and attempt just just to kind of clean up the language comma and attempt to provide a draft okay um yeah i if you'd like to move that as your motion to modify on attachment a the third item it's not enumerated but it's in the third um substantive column uh third i'm sorry third third row um okay. that has a description of work plan item um, I, i'm happy to second it mm. Um, I see Councilmember Willie as well as Councilmember Moore both have their hands up. Councilmember Willie, you haven't made a comment on this item yet. Uh, would you like to speak to it? Oh, sorry, Councilmember Willie, you'll have to unmute yourself. We can't hear you. No, no comment on this one other than I support it. Uh, that's just for my additional items that will be going down. Okay, great. Thanks, Councilmember Willie. Uh, Councilmember Moore, did you want to speak to the modified motion that's on the table? Um, yes, I still I still don't support it. Um, and there is a monetary uh, value to staff time. I would like to have an accounting of the past 10 years, the amount of staff time cost for the attendance and preparation for reports, which have been given at the LAC meetings on the first Friday of the month for the past 10 years. I'd like to know how much has been um, given. I don't know if they uh, paid for the, the cost of using uh, community hall, but I would uh, like to know about that. And we don't have the, the monetary cost for in the budget for staff time on this item. So I don't feel that we are prepared to, to vote on this. Um, and going back in principle, I'll say it again, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the, the, even the possibility of renovating um, their structure. And uh, I think the optics of having the, if Mayor Paul, I believe you were the former president of the Chamber of Commerce. I, I believe that's correct. And I, I just don't like the optics of, of making sure that um, an organization which you were formerly so involved with that they would be receiving city funds for their renovation. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really bothered by that. Okay, well, thank you, Council Member Moore. Let me, let me speak to that. I, I mean, I, I, I think that, I, I don't find that a legitimate concern. I was never compensated at all um, for, my, uh, for, for my volunteering on the Chamber of Commerce Board. And um, it has been now six and a half years since I served and stepped down after I uh, was elected. Um, so I, I don't see what the concern is. I mean, I think um, as with any community chamber has a, a number of different perspectives. So, um, but, but I respect your comment. I just, um, I, I, I just don't really agree with the um, logic behind it. So I, I will be voting for this. Um, so um, council member way, you have your hand up. Yes, I I just remember I when I saw the revised, I don't even see the Chamber of Commerce uh, in there. It, can we look at the um, the motion again? Sorry, I, I I just think the agreement is with the Chamber oh. of Commerce, right? Uh, uh, the, Vice Mayor Chow, if you could put your uh, yeah, sorry, and and then I would like to um uh, relieve um, Council 
Member Moore's uh, concern. The chamber is an important part of our city, and to work with chamber is to benefit not just uh, businesses, but also our residents. So I think a good relationship with the chamber, even with some city resources, uh, it's okay. And also, like uh, Mayor Paul said, everybody on the chamber board is not is a volunteer. So um, that, that's, that's just how I feel. Explore potential of locating Cupino store and public incubator center at Chamber of Commerce or other locations with a mutually beneficial agreement with the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, well, I mean that doesn't. I think that's understood. If you find a different. Oh, okay. If, yeah. if that's understood. Then that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't didn't know who the agreement was. Okay, I got. Yeah. It. And, and, and Vice Mayor Shao, if you could just depluralize merchandises because that's. Merchandise is already plural. Uh, as it was. Oh, sorry. Uh, an attempt to provide a draft proposal for consideration by the council. All right, I'm good. At the end of fiscal 21-22. Okay, well, you know, I think we understand everyone's sentiments. And so I'd like to uh, call for a vote on this motion that's on the table. Um, Madam City Clerk, would you please- hey, I'm sorry, you, uh, you, you don't have a second for calling the question. And um, I just want to bring up that we do not have a codified economic development committee that which has been meeting since the 70s we don't have a codified uh, fiscal strategic uh, planning committee and we currently uh, don't okay, i'm going to call a point of order you are absolutely correct if there is an objection to calling the question um then obviously there's at least one uh, vote that wouldn't go with it i will ask for a second uh for my uh, motion to call the question is there a second uh, for coming i second yeah Okay. Actually, um, you are the chair. Do you need a second for call the question? I, I do. I do. I, because um, the, the rule is that calling the question does require, um, in, in our case, it requires four votes. Um, if I call the question and no one objects, um, then, then we can proceed with a roll call vote. But if someone is objecting, then yes, I will call for a second. But you are the chair. Couldn't you just decide? Okay, that's. I cannot. I can't. I, I cannot because I can. I can unilaterally request it. But if there's a if there's an objection, there may be another dissenting vote to call the question. In which case, we need to, as a point of order, um, and this is the type of uh, motion that needs to be immediately uh, addressed. And so I, I have uh, my motion to call the question and your second, Madam City Clerk. Would you please conduct a roll call vote? on the motion to call a question. Council Member Moore? No. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Madam City Clerk, would you please um, conduct a roll call vote for the original motion? Council Member Moore? No. Council Member Way? Aye. Council Member Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Both motions carry with more voting no. Okay, thank you very much. And I, um, someone remind me, was Councilmember Moore next or Councilmember Way next on, I, I, I honestly don't remember who I had called out. Um, you don't um, know, Council, Councilmember Way, do you I, mind if Councilmember? I lowered my hand, so yeah. Can I propose? The other item that's related uh, on row four, I was. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to move on and give people an opportunity. Okay. Um, but but what I will commit to you is, um, you can use my opportunity to go ahead and you know propose that. So, um, Council Member Moore. Uh, I'd like to move that we approve budget items one through fifty three, less item two, which we had already approved. Budget items, you mean the proposed work plan items or? Yes, work plan items, thank you. One through 53, less item number two. Okay, so you wanna just go ahead and move the proposed city work plan, is that is that correct? I am not including the first page items. I, I understand. So items one through 53, um, excluding the item that we've already modified and approved. Um, item two, correct. All right, is there a sec well, I'll, I'll go ahead and second that because I made the commitment to go ahead and second uh, proposals. Um, are there any, uh, well, first of all, Councilmember Moore, would you like to speak to your motion? Well, it's on the table. 
Uh, I think we've adequately, ad adequately addressed all of these items and made our modifications to them. Uh, so, and then I think the bulk of the discussion goes uh, to these, uh, the, the items on the first page. Okay, fair enough. Um, council member way. Um, yes, so um, I, um, I think it's time we approve the work plan. But I do have a question for the staff. The housing element process for RENA related to general plan updates and rezoning would take a big chunk of time of staff. And staff also need to do um, other services for our residents. This list of fiscal year 21-22 city work plan is very, very extensive. Has the staff evaluated time commitments realistically? Shall, we, shall the council be advised that some of the plans might not be done because of all the work that, you know, we, we expect 50 something items. And I just think it's an extensive work plan. And to me, it's pretty unrealistic with the staff time we have. So I understand we're gonna pass it or we will pass it, but just to be understanding that this, some of the items might not get done as what we have done 2020, 1920s, City plans are going to move to the next year, and 2021 20, moves to this year. I, I just think it's a real extensive list. So I like to start feedback on it, and I like our council members to kind of know ahead of time that some of them might not be done realistically. Okay, did staff want to speak to Councilmember Roy's question? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, Ben Fu, Director of Community Development, if I may respond to Councilmember Way real quick. You're correct, Cosmo <laughs> Way, it is a pretty, pretty extensive well, program uh, plan, but as you're also aware, we do have a pretty high functioning team as well. With that said, the, the housing element is is pretty big for, for just about every city, uh, with the exception of the, the largest cities that you can think of. Uh, for most of ours, it's an enormous uh, uh, item, which is why uh, in our budget uh, request, we've asked for uh, funding to support uh, a potential um, uh, contract a contractor to help out, as well as um, additional uh, staffing. So uh, let's recall from, from, and that will come in our budgetary discussion as well. Uh, we've asked for, for um, one additional planner to, to assist as well as uh, additional monies uh, for the contract. So with that, we're, we're um, confident and optimistic that we should be able to complete uh, the other items on the uh, war program as well. Great, thank you, Director Fu. Okay, thank you. I just think it's really ambitious, and um, I'm hoping that we're not pushing the staff to too much, and uh, maybe just a little understanding that some realistically some of the programs might be pushed back. Thank you, Th thank you, Councilmember Boy, and Director Lee. Did you want to make a comment as well? I noticed your camera is on and your microphone is on as well. Yes, um, you know, with with the resignation of, of Deb Fang as a city manager, that that has a potential to throw a throw a wrench mm -hmm. into how how we are managed as departments, you know, going forward. And there's gonna be some transition there and that's something that none of us know about right now. So I just wanna put that um, obvious fact on the table as well. Well, thank you, Dr. Lee. And I, I will make a comment as well. I mean, just to provide us some context on our current fiscal year, um, we are in a very unusual year. It was the COVID year. I think we all pulled together. Uh, it was very well recognized that city manager Fung did a lot of work that I believe uh, a lot of it was, was very excellent in, in terms of the COVID response as well as the homelessness uh, encampment. And I think um, it's also fair to say that council responded um, and we made decisions that kept the community safe, uh, the community responded, but at the same time, it is a very unusual year. Um, it, it, at the beginning of the seventh month of the fiscal year, there was an attempt to extend our current work plan by another year. Um, and, and so I think, you know, somewhere between basically saying, let's forget about the metrics of the current year work plan um, and let's hold everyone to an insistence that we get everything done in our new work plan, there is that happy medium, right? Because our community was willing, uh, our council was willing to entertain the possibility of extending it out another year and essentially using the identical work plan from last year, um, which is basically saying, well, you don't have to worry about getting anything done, you know, in the current fiscal year to, you know, going through the process that we have right now. 
So I, I think that we'll be very compassionate about it and that we have a very defined track record of, uh, of doing that. So, um, but points well taken, you know, we, Council Member Wood, really appreciate the uh, comment um, that, you know, you have, you have goals, you have plans, but you know, you never know what might happen. We had no idea in October of 2019 that our world was about to change so profoundly for the next year and a half. Excuse so me, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and- um, there, My motion does not include the, the arena uh, part or the two on the, on the top of the page. I'm, I'm only items one through 53 less item two. And uh, uh, the arena item was not prioritized. I just wanna clarify that. So there's what you, you do have actually four items that were on the first page. Uh, you already moved item, uh, I'll call it item three on, on page one of attachment A. Um, you still have the top two items on the page two of attachment A, which will also need to separately be dealt with. I don't think we can just imagine that it's getting approved um, because it has to be done by law. I think we actually have to approve it. So again, I'm just doing items one through 53. We'll have to thank go you, back. Thank you for that clarification, Council Member Moore. It's a, it's a very valuable one, uh, especially uh, since the comment was made particularly to uh, one of the two items at the top of uh, page two of the proposed uh, city work plan attachment A. So we have um, a couple of hands raised um, from Vice Mayor Chow and Council Member Willie. Vice Mayor Chow, did you want to speak to the motion on the table? Yes. Yes. So I'm a little confused. In the past, um, we make our comments. I think the staff collect our comments and then there will be updated and then we are asked to motion individually and then before i can finish my motion individually and now we have a sweeping motion so then would my comments earlier be captured or not um well if you if you have a desire to go through um more individual comments um i think you have a couple of options at this point you can um, propose a substitute motion with your uh, okay. modifications, um, or you can uh, try to defeat the current motion that's on the table and go through a continued process um, as we were going through before. Okay. Then I'd like to propose a substitute motion that's also for item one to, what's the end, 53? And for item three, I'd like to clarify that the name is not revisit 5G because the content actually include a, um, recording, responding to complaints, transparency on the existing applications. So it's not just the possible modification of the 5G regulation. So the name is a uh, bit misleading. And uh, I would like the staff to give us a little more detail on the 250,000 that's proposed. And then do we have any uh, cost recovery plan for that? And then the number five, as I said earlier, I think this should include the staff work to monitor Lehigh's proposed new plans. Number eight, and I mentioned earlier that it's not clear the description as if we are just planning. But then I know it's in CIP, but still the description here should be because public might not read CIP. So the, here it needs to be more clear. It's plan and construction, and then there are like three different parts. So just more description. And number 12 also, um, I hope that to clarify that we, we are intending to have outreach likely to start in Q3 of the, this fiscal year. So that's my... Okay, so those are your additions to... Um, mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, well let, me, let me check in first with the original movement. Um, uh, Council Member Moore, would you be willing to modify your original motion to incorporate comments from Vice Mayor Chow uh, before we entertain the possibility of a substitute motion instead. Only this to avoid confusion, just this. Um, no. No, okay. So um, Vice Mayor Chow, you now have placed a substitute motion on 
uh, which is identical to the original motion, but you would like to add the comments that you have there for items three, five, eight, and 12. I will go ahead and second uh, your substitute motion. Uh, Council Member Willie, you have a hand raised. Yeah, so um, pertaining to this, I, I would think to try to simplify what we're doing here tonight is that if uh, Vice Mayor Chow were to say, um, a friendly amendment and number three, a friendly amendment number five, friendly amendment number eight, friendly amendment number 12. Then ask Councilman Moore, which of the friendly amendments would she accept? And then we move on. Um, let me let me see if Vice Mayor Chow would be willing to go through that procedure. Vice Mayor Chow, are you willing to? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll withdraw my second. So your substitute motion's off table. Um, uh, please proceed with the request for friendly amendments um, on three, five, eight, and 12 in sequence. And if you um, are okay with it, I'll just ask uh, for that. Is that okay? So could I, could I just ask a council member more which one she would accept and which one she would not and why? Um, okay, so the problem here, these are uh, clarification questions predominantly, uh, and th that's asking for, for staff assistance on it, and I, I don't find that that's particularly necessary at this point, um, and I think it gets into a level of detail which I'm not comfortable with, so I prefer that it's a little bit more high level. Um, well, these are not detailed. There are mis description, mischaracterization of the project. And what as what we have seen in the past, when we propose the work program, we say this is what we want to do. Staff come back with a description. A year later, no updates. Then we find out they are going off in a different direction. That's the reason why I want to make it clear this is what we mean. And especially if you say, oh, it's just plan, but no, it's not really plan. There is construction, but read CIP. Come on, you cannot expect every community member to read CIP. This is a work program. It should be standing alone, has sufficient description so a community member can read the work program. And we can read the program six months later and remember, oh, this is what we want to do. Oh, okay, well, Vice Mayor Chow, I'm hearing council members more say that that's the intention. There, 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 there isn't a, a, an item that she would accept as a, a friendly amendment. Um, so, so feel free to uh, to jump in, council member Moore, if that's not correct. Um, oh, but and further, furthermore, like when we're looking at uh, include the staff work to monitor Lehigh's proposed plans. I, you know, and that and that gets into some other issues with with Lehigh. Uh, there's been staff has definitely been um, looking into uh, Lehigh's proposed plans. That's, that's not even an issue. Uh, yeah, and I think this kind of boils down to this, this process uh, in general. Uh, I feel like the, the work plan would have been easier to have had CIP separated out um, and just for, for understanding it and having it match up a little bit better with the, the budget um, overall. But that those questions, those comments are neither here nor there at this point. Um. Okay, well, I, I see the um, original substitute motion that was removed um, from consideration as being a set of uh, follow-ons and um, direction to staff. Um, so, I, I would I would like to ask Vice Mayor Chow if she would like to uh, reintroduce her substitute motion at that yeah. at this time. Okay. So I'll reintroduce my substitute motion as stated on the screen. Could could uh, I just try reason, in for one um, second me, there? The reason I we I'm specifying Lehigh is because it's something the staff is doing and we need update of. It's something that should have been on the work program anyway. I think I did mention this before. So now I'm, we are just clarifying. This is part of the, our work. Okay, Vice Mayor Chow, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and second your, your, your reintroduced substitute motion. And Councilmember Willie, 
you had a comment? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that uh, since um, we each have individual uh, uh, takes on these, that if the mayor made the substitute motion for 1 to 30, uh, 1 to 53, and then we additional council members could then make our friendly amendments as we felt necessary, and the mayor could, you know, be that final deciding, um, um, uh, you know, uh, entity, allowing us to get through this. I mean, it's already 930, and we're, we're still stuck. Right. Okay. Um, let, let me let me do this since there is a substantive motion on the table. Um, let me ask you, Councilmember Woolley, are there items uh, on the proposed city work program that you wanted to uh, introduce for discussion or potential modification beyond uh, what Councilmember uh, Vice Mayor Chow had? And I believe, since this is off the uh, screen right now, I believe it was was a three, five, eight, and twelve. Is that right? Yes, good memory. Okay, so Council Member Willie, do you have any other items that you wanted to modify? Yeah, and again, in the interest of time uh, and where we're at, so there's... Just name three, out the numbers. Yeah, so uh, there's three. And so number uh, 26, I would either like 26 removed, City Hall, uh, investigate uh, uh, alternative. Councilmember, well, just name out the numbers right now. It's 26, and what are the other two? Uh, number 12, which uh, Vice Mayor's always already uh, got something pertaining to that, and okay. then number 19. Okay, let's do let's do this. Councilmember, Vice Mayor Chow, would you be willing to, well, I'll withdraw my second for the substitute motion. Um, and I, I'd like to introduce another substitute motion which is to go ahead and move forward the proposed work plan items um, one through 53, excepting two, which has already been, um, which has already been modified and approved, uh, as well as three, five, eight, 12, 19, and 26, so that we may uh, now focus in on the remaining six. Uh, and, and I apologize, Council Member Wade, did you have any others that you wanted to go over? No, I don't. Actually, okay. I only have a comment. Okay, so those are our six. I'd like to I'd like to move those. Um, again, that's one through fifty three, excepting two, three, five, eight, twelve, nineteen, and twenty six, without further modifications. Can I have a second for the substitute motion? Second. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Moore. Um, any further uh, discussion, Councilmember Willie? You have your hand raised. I'm confused. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Councilmember Willie, you have your hand raised. Did you want to say anything about this particular substitute motion? So with your substitute motion then, a friendly amendment for number 26. Okay, um, Council Member Willie, what I would like to do is just keep a clean slate, <laughs> if, if that's okay, um, so that we can just get these approved and then go over the other items. Um, I, okay. I, I respect you're trying to go through an omnibus motion, but I just, I don't know with six items whether we're gonna get to that point. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Vice Mayor Chow? So I'm a little confused. So you are moving 1 to 53, except the six. The yeah, except the six that we've been talking about. Amendment. Right, we would do move those later. Right. OK. OK, so, thank you very much. OK, so, so are, you, are those six, is 19 and 26 excluded then? Oh, they're not included in the motion. So the ones that Great. we're going in for a follow-up discussion on are 3, 5, 8, 12, 19, and 26. Great. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So um, I, I don't see any further hands raised. Madam City Clerk, would you please conduct a roll call vote on the substitute motion on the table? Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Way? Aye. Councilmember Willie? Aye. Vice Mayor Chow? Aye. Mayor Paul? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, well, I'm just gonna take a, a quick stop here and just remind everyone that we've now um, passed uh, essentially 90% of the items on our work plan. And so, you know, I think we all deserve a collective sigh and a, a pat on the back, uh, but I'll go ahead and take a five minute break as well. We've been going now since 6.30, we're right around the three hour mark. So let's go ahead and reconvene at 9.35.
and hopefully we can get through um, the rest of these items. Thanks.